There's a regular right there, an ice right there. I'm cool. Water if anything. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, August 19th. We're going to go into executive session very shortly. Hopefully to reconvene an open session at 6.30, but I would guess that that would be a little bit after that. So uh, do we have a motion to go into executive session? I'll go through the agenda after the executive session. Uh, and move that the uh, Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection A, Clauses 2 and 6 to convene an executive session. Second. 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 Aye. 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 Paul. So, I uh, thank you. We'll be back. <laughs> As Ricky Ricardo was saying, is it okay if I flip the swoosh? Who <laughs> say flip the swoosh? Those of us old enough to remember Ricky Ricardo. Nice station, Bob. Not mine, not mine. You can just fly by your business. <laughs> done, done, done. Hey, George. Good. 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 Doing? Hi, how, do, how does this sound? Um, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to enter into an amendment to the employment agreement between the Town of Littleton and Mr. George T. Clancy, which provides for a step increase to step five on grade 12, retroactive to July 1st, and a fire prevention stipend to be paid on a biweekly basis retroactive to July 1st, 2019, with an additional retroactive lump sum payment of 2500 for the period between January and... We good? Hey, you quick. Stay outside. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back on. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of August 19th. Um, we just had an executive session. The rest of the session will be organization. Uh, we'll talk about Deputy Chief Tom Clancy's employment agreement. And what was supposed to be 635 and way beyond that. Uh, department board updates, gift of acceptance of fire and police departments. B, a one day liquor license by Common Foods Incorporated for the Park and Rec Continuing Education, Oktoberfest and October 5th, 2019. C, Mattawanaki Trail Reconstruction and Miscellaneous st Street Paving Contract Awards. D, Open Finance Customer Service Platform presentation by Stephen Nudy and Cheryl Stuller. And we're on 7.30 by then, public input, member <coughs> updates, announced monthly meeting with the COA director representatives of the COA and friends of the COA. That's followed by a one-day liquor license request by Littleton Community uh, Farm for a fun day, fundraiser dinner on September 14, 2019. <coughs> At 7.35, we're supposed to be 7.35, retail marijuana discussion, then our next steps, followed by town building and space needs contract. Uh, that's followed by vacant positions of the assistant town administrator, the building commissioner, and facilities director. Uh, and number nine, it will be goal submission, our next steps on that, with a special town meeting timeline, special town meeting for October 28, 2019, open warrant, discuss potential articles, B, selectman's meeting schedule for balance of calendar year 2019, C, Light and Water 2019 Mass Works Grant Application D Waiver of Permit Fees for Work Application uh, Work con uh, Contracted by the Town E Appointment to Minimum Advisory Minutemen Advisory Group Interlock Coordination Then Minutes And if we could do the Pledge of Allegiance Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ms. Town Administrator, new mail. Thank you. Yes, there were three items of mail uh, in the packet. A letter from the Friends of Pine Hawk regarding the Town of Concord's proposed work at Nagog Pond. An email from Mr. Frank Thibault, who is interested in purchasing and restoring the Baker House at 12 Robinson Road. Mr. Thibault has been referred to the 12 Robinson Road Working Group, and um, Mr. Thibault has also been informed that if or when the town sells the property, that a public procurement process would need to be followed, either through a request for proposals or an invitation for bid. 
And then finally, a letter from the Light and Water Department regarding the emerging issue of, I had this PFAS. off. Yeah, PFAS, but I had the word and I had it uh, announced, but I don't think I'm gonna attempt it right now. Anyway, it's, it's here on my screen. Uh, anyway, <laughs> PFAS and the proactive testing that they've been doing. That's it, That's it for that. We'll, if um, we can move on to item B uh, under, or really it's item A under this item, which is Deputy Chief Tom Clancy's employment Tom agreement. agreement. I want to thank the Deputy Chief for being extremely patient with us. It's gone on now for since January. We finally finally took care of it just uh, two weeks ago and okayed it tonight. So I need a motion to okay that agreement. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to enter an, um, into an amendment to the employment agreement between the Town of Littleton and Mr. George T. Clancy, which provides for a step increase to step five on grade 12 retroacted to July 1st, 2019, and a fire prevention stipend. In the amount to, of $5,000. In the amount of $5,000 to be paid on a biweekly basis retroactive to January Go with it. Oh, to July 1st, 2019, with an additional retroactive lump sum payment of $2,500 for the period between January 1st, 2019 and June 30th, 2019. Yeah. Second. Motion been made and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all's in favor? Aye. 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 I suppose. Okay, that's done. Okay. Item number three, accept DCU gifts for the fire and police departments. Um... Certainly, we can ask the deputy at uh, the, the fire chief to come up and speak to this item. But um, unless there are any questions, I understand that this is something that is rather customary that the DCU provides uh, a couple of different grants to the town. There's a motion ready to go. Obviously, that one is for um, costs associated with student awareness and fire education, known as SAFE, and the other is for the police department relative to community policing efforts. Chief, anything? Uh, this is, it's, the, uh, it's an annual thing. They've, uh, they've, this is the third year in a row that we've received a gift from DCU. Um, second year of which it was $5,000. Um, it's, it's, it's a great gift. Uh, it, it helps boost the state program that, uh, that's funded through the state as well. Any other discussion? Sir. Looking for a motion then. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to MGL Chapter 44, Section 53A to receive an unsolicited gift from the Digital Federal Credit Union, DCU, of $5,000 to, to be deposited into a special gift fund account to be used without further appropriation by the fire chief towards costs associated with student awareness of fire education <coughs> safe and senior safe fire safety education programs of the fire department to $5,000 to be deposited into a special gift fund to be used without further appropriation by the police chief towards costs associated with community policing efforts, for example, senior luncheons, veterans, breakfast, coffee with a cop, bicycle patrols, and Littleton police open houses, etc. Second. Motion has been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Can I just, Mr. Chairman, if, sure, I, if I may? Please. Um, Nina, do you mind just drafting a, a very simple thank you note to DCU just to... We'd be happy to. Just to, on our behalf. It is something that they do on a regular basis and don't want to take it for granted. You know, the, it, it, it has become routine, but the fact that it's become routine, all the more reason for us to reach out to them and tell them how much we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, item 3B is the Park and Rec and Continue Education Oktoberfest One Day Liquor License Request. Go up. You can <coughs> stop. I'll go ahead and stay Joe, up. Joe, oh, I'm sorry. I got a work call. I got to take it real quick. Welcome. Some folks in the field. Alicia, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be back. Long break. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we're here tonight um, just to talk about the Oktoberfest that Parks and Rec would like to um, put on for a special event. We're working with Sub Shop, so yep. Greg and um, James. James. So um, we're here if you have any questions. Um, I can kind of go through some of the uh, conversations that we've had as far as planning with the police, anything like that that you might have further questions on. Can you explain what Oktoberfest is? It's because it's brand new. I can, absolutely. So um, it's actually quite common for a lot of parks and recreation departments throughout Massachusetts and the nation to uh, provide an event like this. 
Um, so it's a family event. Um, so it's you know very similar when you think of Oktoberfest, <coughs> you think of the pretzels, the oompa bands, things like that. Um, so we will have all of those things, um, and we will also be serving alcohol as well. So that's why we're here to do the one day liquor license. Um, so yeah, so it will be a celebration of fall in a German style, if you will. <laughs> On the one day liquor license part, um, how will that be set up? James, James. James. through the, uh, it, the guy that goes off of our liquor license, we just have to apply, obviously, for a separate yeah. one day. Yeah, on the grounds, though, how is it controlled where it can be so. Oh, Go ahead. Oh, no. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm speaking to Tim, stuff like that. Uh, so the situation is you can do two different ways. We're still talking to Tim and Lisa about the setup. You can do it as like a beer garden situation where it's a closed in area. And it's a designated area where you can have alcoholic drinks and stuff like that. The other option is also to have the entire park closed in and essentially a gate in and out. And that way you'll be able to freely walk around with alcohol and just a you know, simple gate where you check in and check out. So alcohol can't leave and people can't bring stuff in. And the conversations that we've had with the police is uh, we would more likely go with the second option and have... Um, so the staff would be provided because they are all TIP certified from um, the sub shop. So those would be the people that would be checking the IDs. We would have a special stamp. So no stamp, no service at all. Um, if it washes off, you got to go back and get your ID checked again. Um, with the entrance, you would get two tickets. Um, so that would be it. And you could come back and purchase more. But that would be up to the staff that's serving for cutting off as well as police. If they think that someone's had too much, then absolutely, then that, yeah, that person's done. Um, so we have gone through a lot of these scenarios, especially with the police and um, figuring out how we really want to set up the park so that it's set up the safest, you know, to run an event like this. And I did talk to Chief Bernard less than two hours ago. And yes. He's fully back to this. Yes. Questions by the board. Actual German beer, too much to ask for? <laughs> Whatever you'd did like. Did you say yes? Yeah, whatever. Great question. We have a big truck. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have the truck. By the visor? So. <laughs> That's Czech beer, right? Oh. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I, the, the fact that the um, police chief, I, fire chief, no, no concerns. Yeah, so as long as our public safety folks are okay with it, yep. seems like you've checked all the boxes. So They're running the show with it, so we do whatever they're going to tell us to do. Anything else? Look for a motion, then. How we do it? I move the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Master in Law Chapter 138, Section 14, to issue a special license, also known as a one-day liquor license, to Mr. Gregory Ellers of Common Foods, Inc., for wine and malt beverages to be served during the Park Recreation Community Education PRCE October 5th, 2019, Oktoberfest event between the hours of 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you very much. Donica Shane. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 you can't wait for that. No, you can't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, James. Thank See you, guys. guys. Thank you so much. We're going to... Chris. Hello. And Chris is here to talk about Mattawanaki Trail Reconstruction, miscellaneous paving contract awards. Yep. So we bid out uh, both projects, the Mattawanaki Trail Reconstruction, Phase 1. That's a two-year project. Um, and uh, the various roads paving it came, back, came before you in, uh, probably March, maybe, and we kind of went over the list. So the Zaro Paving won both contracts, so we just need to uh, have you guys authorize us to sign it so we can get going. Actually, the Mattawanaki Trail, that's been waiting for for quite a period of time now, right? A lot longer than I've been here, yeah. My, my first go-round, which that goes back. So we're going to end up doing about half of it this year and half of it <clears> next year. <throat> the reason we had to split it was, well, cost, and there's a bit more permitting in the second half than the first half, so... We'll, uh, and the second half is the technically is the closest, closest, closest to Gilson. Closest Road. to Gilson, correct? Yeah, we're starting from inside and working our way back towards Gilson. <clears throat> Happy to move that the board of selectmen vote to approve two contract awards in the amounts of two hundred nine thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars twenty-six cents and six hundred eighty-six thousand 
$712.46 to Lazaro Painting Paving, excuse me, Corp. of Shirley Mass for contract number 8-01-19, Mattawanaki Trail Roadway Reconstruction and contract 8-8-19, <coughs> resurfacing and related work, various locations respectively. Second. Motion been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Yes. Thank you. And now for open finance. And Steve, before you start, can you just do a brief explanation to the town what this is all about? Absolutely. Let me just make sure this is Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. <coughs> so <clears throat> you too, Steve. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, open finance is something that the selectmen have been interested in um, for a few years now <clears throat> as a way to provide transparency to the citizens of the town. This product uh, that you're going to be seeing tonight takes what you would think of the original open checkbook feature and brings it to another level because there's a lot more information here than what you would normally have thought of years ago. Okay, so we can go right into it. <clears throat> I can talk about <clears throat> what's going to show up on the home page um, in a little more detail a little later. Um, but there's a lot of ways to get to the information that we're going to see, a lot of different ways. Mainly the, <clears throat> the big pieces of the puzzle are these four cards that we have here. First is a revenue budget, operating budget, and then we go into payroll and vendor. Vendor is what you would think of with the open checkbook thing, is every expense that the town is, has had during the fiscal year. So we've added payroll and budget modules to, to what you would think. Let's <clears throat> start off with that. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's start off with the high level for the operating budget first. And the, the, the disclaimer here that we'll see is that the light department is on a calendar year basis. The town's general ledger is on a fiscal year basis. And what we've tried to do in working with the light department is try and get their budget into a fiscal year basis because this is running off our GL. So it's not totally exact. It's provides a good picture of it, and we're going to work with the light department once we cross the calendar year to make this work. But Can you also speak to the fact that this says $93 million, and that's not, that includes this the is light water department, this so we don't scare people to town, know going for town wide. Right. <clears throat> so let's get into that and, and find out why that's $93 million. Top level that we're going to see here, and we'll see this with any type of screen that we get to, is an entity-wide position, you can see where it says here is the entity. So we're looking at the town as a total. So you can see the light department, the town, the school department, and the water department. So the big four big places <coughs> in town. So anything that goes on in this town, we could drill down from any of these boxes and see the detail behind it. Okay? <coughs> so let's drill into the town, for example. So the town's budget of $30 million comes from these sources, the biggest one being the general fund. We can drill into the general fund and we come to <clears throat> basically a list of departments as the state sees it it's from their Schedule, Schedule A report. Schedule A, Schedule a report. Um, <coughs> so this is how they break down the town, basically. So we're dealing with 27 million right now. We can go into the public safety piece, for example. And we can see the detail of the different public safety components of the town's budget, according to the state. <clears throat> and if you recall on, on the budget sheets, the three sample budget comparison sheets I sent out, this is basically the first level where we just showed you, here's the departments. Mm -hmm. 
So if we listed all the departments, this is what you would have seen on that report. Okay. If I go into is the police chief there? No. We'll go into the police budget. <laughs> <laughs> In that case. <laughs> So the police department is $1.88 million of their appropriation for the town. And <clears throat> this is the budget report that you just received, for example, it shows salaries and expenses. So if you had a question on any of those reports, you could drill in, for example, and look at is the detail for those expenditures. Again, you can hover over anything and you can see budget to actual. The light colored is the budget, and the dark colored is the actual for each of That's those things. You can, you can also see it in different formats, too, right? You could see... <coughs> there you go. And again, you can just hover straight over things. Over time, it's all going to be this one fiscal year, but it will accumulate year after year as we build more data here. Mm -hmm. If we were to go back, again, picking on the, the police department, we look at their salaries and wages. Again, we're going to see the detail of each of those line items so you can see where the money is being spent as far as wages for each of those things, including overtime right here. Okay? And we can drill into any of the departments mm -hmm. just straight down. We can also come back and we could look, if I came back to the top level, <coughs> and I look at the operating budget. Again, this is everything now. We're back to the whole town. If I came here instead of entity, and I brought it down to expense category, screen. Come on. It's like it's not going. Should I want the other end? One of the others? Eric is here. You want to pick on school expense? <laughs> <laughs> This is make sure it's connected. It Look is at connected. That tiny <laughs> <laughs> well played, Erica. Well played. <laughs> so, good example here: schools, and here's their general fund appropriation, and how they divide up their budgets by school. And further on, if it, as we drill in, we could see that. I don't know why that didn't connect when I did that back here, but you'd be able to see for the entire town that break out by expenses. You're kind of working on the playground right now because it's not live, right? It, it's, it's all our data. It's our you're data. In a, you're in a yes. playground, so it's kind of a protected until it... Yes. So, just a little glitch, probably. Second phase. We could come back here and do vendor payments. And it's the exact same type of drill down. There's a four units again. We go into the town, we can look at the general fund. There's the general fund categories again for the different departments. We go into public safety, police department. And if you notice up here, the checkbook tab came. So at any point in time, once I went into vendor payments, I could go into that checkbook. So these are all the police expenses that have happened so far this fiscal year in the different categories. At this level, I could go in, into checkbook and I could see the detail behind each and every one of those categories. Is that the easiest way for someone to, if say they want to track week to week our, our um, you know, the weekly warrants that we sign, is that the way they would get to that place or? You could come back up to the top here. Go into the checkbook here. Now this is every Before single warrant, expense. Right. This is eight point five million, and so up by check date. So then you could check the the actual 
expenses for that week. You can sort of find any one of those columns, right? And it looks yeah, like there's a uh, there's a picture of the actual invoice on the. There's not. No. This is as deep as it goes right here. Is that something that's attainable? No. I would say, well, with a tremendous amount of resources, yes. Well, I don't even know if it would be available on it, this form. It's not available on this form. Come to think about once you Well, through this vendor, the, anyway, because, I mean, other towns do have that. that here's here's that the bill you're actually paying. this software, it's not available. So if we were looking at a credit card bill, all we'd see is the bottom line. In a description. You would... But if it had 10 different charges on it. That is changing in the next month. What will it change to? Multiple it will change entries. to the actual vendor that's being paid. Not okay, so not the uh, not the person, not the bank, but the uh, WB Mason gotcha. or Fine. somebody bought something yes. from Amazon. Okay. You'll see Amazon here. Okay, with the description beyond with that. the description. All right, that, so that's the level of detail uh, hoping for. Yeah. Okay. Go into the next module. So it, again, as I go through <coughs> and drill down to any of those lines, I can filter any of those expenses. I could come top line. If I had a question on one particular vendor, I could use this sort right here, for example, this search. Instead of searching all of <coughs> the finance, I can come to open expenditures. And for example, w I did WB Mason. I could just type in WB and it's going to find anything with WB in there. So I could come to here, WB Mason Supplies, and of course that's the description. Let me go back. Just search here. description too. Account description, account description, account description. Because you can see where it's coming from. It's pulling. There's just so many WB Mason supplies here. If I went to a different vendor, so I said <coughs> ISO, for example. So ISO is a vendor that the light department uses for their power payments. It's not liking this. All right, we'll have to figure out what's going on. These searches are, don't seem to be working here. ISO. So I type it in the vendor up the top, and here's all our payments to ISO New England, which is the power vendor that they use. Okay. That's the vendor piece. The payroll piece works the exact same way. So top line, we've spent that $4.47 million so far this year in payroll. Here's the breakout. Base pay is the light number, any overtime is the reddish, and other pay is in the dark blue. Other pay would be longevity, quinbill, education, stipends. stipends, those types of things. Again, just break going right down into this is the town, same type of thing. Pick on the police department once again. At any point, changes here. Once it changes, is all the police, what they've been paid for the year. I can come into paycheck details at this point. 
and see the weekly paychecks for each employee. I can filter at any point in time, sort, filter for just Ed. By weeks paychecks, correct? By weeks. Each paycheck. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, just for, for the keen eyed in the audience who might be saying, that's weekly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something too weak to me. <laughs> okay. The final thing is the revenue <coughs> side. It works exactly the same way as the operating budget. And we're able to see, again, revenues versus what's been budgeted. Um, we have been budgeting revenues. Um, that may change. Moving forward. That will change. <laughs> <laughs> but historically, that hasn't been done. But you can see the actuals that have come in for each of these things for um, so in. far this year. So that is open finance. I, I did want to show you some of the things on the homepage here. <coughs> so the search, it seems like the search didn't work when we were in, but coming back to the home screen, it, it did kind of reset itself. So I will call them about that. <laughs> Um, we have common questions here, which we can control. So I put some easy questions here. How much does the light department spend on purchasing electricity? Click it, and it brings it straight to that chart with the vendors that they use to purchase electricity. And we can go in to see the checkbook and each one of the payments that have been made. I can come back here. Again, is another search bar. This is exactly like the one up the top, only this is always searching um, the entire site. <clears throat> we also have right down here some other panels that, again, we can control. We can show three of them. So I just did three, for example, with the top vendors that we pay. And so far this year, these have been the, the top five or six of them. We can click into this at any point. <coughs> and get the detail behind all this. So to the extent that somebody <laughs> to the extent that somebody wants to see where the money's coming from, where the money's going to, they can they can dive down. This is a you, you unfortunately you can't link from this panel, the operating budget, and see the expenses and go directly into the vendor to see the payments that have been made. Yeah to go to the vendor, okay. But you have to go into that separate card, but you can do the exact same drill down. Yeah. And that, that those fields. That's good. <coughs> okay. Looking for this for a while. Good. I'll talk to them about the little glitches that still popped up, but other than that, this is ready to be published on our website. Okay, so we'll move forward. Ooh. What, um, what plans, if any, do we have to sort of orient the public to how to utilize this, dig into it? I guess over time, as we get calls in on how to do things, we could probably do something to, to step through, or we could start working on you know, top-line navigation through this. I could see this being a double-edged sword for... For you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. More, more transparency, more information results in a lot more. I mean, so, mm -hmm. I'd be something as simple as a tutorial uh, a video on our website, and maybe a you know LCTV, you know, program. I guess that's what I was thinking. Something you, where you af <coughs> after six months, you've you've accumulated here here the ten most common questions we've gotten, and. This is how you answer them. Right, and here's here's how to go through and utilize the system. I think LCTV yep. is a LCTV great idea. LCTV is a good example, way to do it. Okay. That's great. And then you're, you're going to keep answering and indulging us when we have questions about how to use it, too. Absolutely. <laughs> <coughs> Second thing we wanted to show is um, another piece of the transparency puzzle is a citizen self-service function. And initially, the system can do all these little 
aspects of it. Initially, we're thinking of just simply rolling out the real estate piece until so people get used to it before we even introduce some of the others. But I can show you the real estate piece that we'll see. And I'll use me as a guinea pig here. So I'm in real estate, searching for me. And what's showing up here is every tax bill since we converted the data back to from 2006 up to present. I can go into the detail. Here's the 2020 bill. <clears throat> and you'll see that we billed two quarters so far this year. We had the August 1st payment that I did pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the November payment that is still due, and so that shows as a balance. Pay that on October 31st? November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> All this other information is, is available also, so property detail, book and page of the parcel, assessed value. There's my 2020 charges that are still due. Open build, owner information, assessment history, for example. <coughs> Here's the assessed value of my property over the years. And there's also a little chart here that shows it from 06 to 2020 and what the history has been. Actually, this is, this is yeah, good. It works right to left. Yeah, it, it's kind of backwards, but if you look at these high years, if you recall back, I'll bring us back to the classification hearing workshop that we did and we were talking about how the right. the value of the town the value of the parcels in the town after the recession hit was starting to just recover and you can see this right yeah. from this chart yeah looking back here in in 07 and 08 I was up five hundred and five thousand dollars I'm just starting to get back up there in my assessed value I'm still below but if you remember that the, the average uh, value of the parcel in town has been increasing over this time. And that's reflective of all the new parcels that we've built. Those higher priced parcels is what's pushing things up. But existing parcels are having time, hard time keeping up. And they're just starting to, and you would know this from the sales data that's coming out, is it's starting to creep up on the existing parcels now. So we're going to start recovering and getting back to this level. And I, I'll bet you when we get to that November meeting and we go through that exercise again, we'll see some of those values start to creep up. But I digress, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 2020, you can see all, all the, the assessed values that we have. The good thing about it is the information's there. If a resident who gets their payments done by escrow, by the bank, they should be questioning whether their payment was applied properly. They could tell from this. Okay. Not something they can tell right now without calling into the tax collector's office. And we've already had a couple of those calls um, flow through in the past week to the tax collector. Just wanting to make sure that the payment was applied correctly. So even somebody who walks in with a check to make sure that their account is being credited properly. Mm -hmm. So this is a good check and it's a good way for the resident to come in and make sure their account is satisfied before they get the delinquent notice in, in the mail that, hey, you didn't pay your tax bill type of thing. So they'll be able to check on this. That's the good piece of it. The bad piece of it is just like I search for Venuti, I could be searching for Knox. I could be searching for Tacost. I could be searching for anyone in town. Yeah. And that information is there. The information is public, but it's readily available. It's available now, too, though. It just it not is to this available. level, not this level of detail. Finding out if someone's current and that kind of thing, right? And so, Patriot. It all comes from our assessing database, and so I just happen to have the tab set up here. <laughs> Again, I use myself as a guinea pig. <laughs> this is right off our website. It's pulling the information right out of Patriot. Here's my house. Here's where it is. Here's the owner information. I can come in with the assessment and get all that same information <coughs> right now. And it's all right there, right online. 
Now, a lot of the assessing data was already available on our website. That's what this before, is. Yes. Right, right. This is pulling straight from the assessing database. I can even pull up the floor plan of my house out of this. Exterior. So footprint. everything yeah. is already available. This is just a different way to look at it and a different way to consolidate everything into one spot. But it is a good addition to citizen transparency. They can see that their payments are being done properly. I would say that if those other radio buttons are not going to be turned on until we kind of get you know, the, the creep, mm -hmm. crawl, walk, run thing, you can use that. Um, we should, if there's a way for us to black those out or, or because people are going to be trying to click on yes, the, auto, have, the automobile excise tax thing. So we have, if there's a way for us. won't go up until those are gone. Okay, good. People are going to think that something oh, on the just, computer or. Yeah. They're just visible to us right now because you're demoing it. Uh, they're visible because this, they are options to the product. So okay. exactly what I just did with real estate, I could do with personal property, I could do with excise. But when this goes live, those, when it goes live, those elements won't be there. It's just real estate for now until okay. we decide we want to push it even further. Right, just flip the switch. Good stuff. So what's the next step? Next step is we publish it on, out on the website. Work out the kinks, if any, and yeah. publish. It's ready to go. Terrific. I know it's been a long time coming. Appreciate your hard work, Steve, making it happen. And uh, you know, we'll figure out over time with the interaction with the public what, what works well, what doesn't, and we're going to adjust accordingly. It'll all be out there. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yep. Thank you. Answers a lot of questions for people. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you both. You. Thank Item number four is public input. If anyone wants to speak, they can raise their hand. I'll call it you, just give your name and address. Anyone for public input? Yeah. Doug Rank, Six Green Needles Road. So um, just want to have a comment or ask for the selected goals. Um, one from the standpoint, given the overwhelming support at last town meeting for the new library, <laughs> I was hoping that for your goals, you'll consider having um, Part of it fund the library and then also fund it with the tax letter. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Vera Spohr, New Town Road. I'm here because I'm very concerned about the town orchard, the Morrison orchard. Um, I've liked it and gone by and bought their apples and nectarines and peaches and apricots for years. And about three years ago, it didn't look as good. Um, Charlie Auger, who was running it, didn't seem able to do new trees and keep up with what he was doing. Um, he was trying. His four-person there, uh, Cal Mason from Jamaica, was working hard. Um, so I was hoping that attention will be paid. Two years ago, nothing happened. This year, it's really running down. The pruning didn't happen at all on time. I was told that it happened because the person who had been helping Mr. Morrison with, with the orchard pruned it. Um, Charlie didn't have a sudden accident. It didn't suddenly happen. And I'm concerned that this board, which must feel that it's town property and it's valuable, um, hasn't, as far as I can see, stepped up and done what I'm hoping will do. I was at the town hall today and looked at lots of records and saw that the Ag Committee had um, had a meeting on August of 2018. 
and said that they wanted to speak with the board about the long-term objectives for the orchard, the inventory of buildings and equipment owned by the town, the deed restrictions and state contract, and get an outside person to look at the current state of the orchard's management, and that they hope to meet with you by November of 2018. As far as I can see, that never did happen. Um, the last time the Ag Committee met, I believe, or the last minutes that were out there, uh, was in April. And they're paying a lot of attention to the, um, the uh, church properties in front of the Cooperland, but very little attention to the orchard. That has been a great orchard for years and years. And it doesn't help at all to not take care of it. It is going downhill. It still is savable. But I want to urge that something be done. Um, Charlie did well for many years, as far as I can see. He had a 10-year contract from, 20, from 1999. And then, I don't know if he's had other leases. I wasn't able to find them. I did go to the um, town administrator's office, and um, uh, Diane there was going to look for me. But <clears throat> it seems to me that we need to do something about that. It doesn't, it, it'll just get more expensive and more difficult if we let it go downhill further. I'm even worried whether we all want to keep it as an orchard. Um, but I would like it to be an open discussion with town people like myself who uh, feel strongly about it. Uh, I think that's all that I need to say. Um, and I just want to emphasize that it hasn't been sudden. It's been coming for a long time. And I'd like to be happy to help, but I would like something to happen that is positive for the orchard. Thank you. We certainly appreciate what you just said. Who went with Anthony? Yeah, uh, just about a year ago this time, uh, Anthony Christotta, who had some experience with uh, orchards, and myself, I don't think, having heard similar um, concerns, we're happy to report back at that time, uh, relying more on the expertise of Chris than anybody, that uh, indeed pruning was underway and it was visible to the eye that the upkeep was there. Um, it's certainly due for uh, another uh, inspection. I think, Chase, you were able to get out there on a separate occasion from that time. All the items that Vera just mentioned that the Ag Commission brought up um, were drafted into a version of a uh, revised contract through Anthony. I think he was working, Tom, with your office <coughs> on that. And uh, so that exists. And Charlie was fine with that. Some of the concerns is kind of due to his age in terms of success of planning, fill-in, um, supervision, uh, you know, and is, is also reporting on, on production and, and some of the financial viability were items that were requested um, in outside orchardist review and agreed to by Charlie. So um, I, I, we probably haven't discussed the topic in a few months, certainly. I mean, but it came up during our goal setting. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 you're right. Um, so it's worth uh, getting back, uh, I would say looping back, and, and uh, making sure that that's on track. But uh, it's, uh, it's not something that was ignored, and it's not something we, we just met with the Conservation on the uh, Agricultural Commission on a different topic a couple of months ago. They didn't bring it up. so. I, I think we, uh, you know, as far as our annual um, and ongoing stewardship, we, we probably ought to revisit the site uh, personally, uh, or in person, I should say, some, some, some set of the board. But as far as the items that were of immediate concern at the time, they were all incorporated in the draft contract. I'm not sure whether or not that's been um, formalized with Charlie or not, Anthony was kind of carrying the ball on that at the time. If not, he was certainly agreeable to all the terms we brought up. So checking up as to whether or not they're enforced or not is probably a good idea. But that was a year ago. Yeah. Well, well, no, actually it was last winter, too. And the agreement, so the agreement that we put together um, 
through this year was focused on collecting the information about the productivity of the orchard um, that would allow us to put quantifiable information into a request for proposal for someone else to run it. For example, uh, no one actually knew, except Charlie, sort of anecdotally, um, how many of different varieties of apples was, was he growing in it any given year. And so when we extended him for another year through this year, um, we agreed that he would collect that information so that we could then go out and create a meaningful request for a proposal to exactly, as you described, see it in orderly transition of the property. And so we're at the phase now where we have to pick that up and the time when we will have, when we will want other people to come in and take a look at the property um, will be this fall. Uh, that is, people who want to submit uh, an application to uh, to an RFP. Or even just the outside orchardist assessment, too. I do want to add that this year, if you go to the stand, there's almost nothing there. It used to be just full of all kinds of apples, peaches, apricots, seconds that were a real bargain. You even had vegetables at times. At this point, there are maybe, you know, three bags of apples and five quarts of peaches and pea cherries. A little and early in the season, about, too, Vera. No, it isn't. Well, I think for a lot of his product it is, but anyway, we're, I, I take the point that, uh, you know, it's, we're due to get back in touch with him on that, but... Uh, it's way, way down. Hmm? And what he's producing is way, way down. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take the bait on that again. We thought that, we heard that last year, and then we'll have to find that was not the case, so... Uh, I mean, he, he's mindful, and we're mindful of you know his age and his difficulty in getting uh, uh, help. Actually, that's an immigration uh, issue as much as anything. He's I think the day we went up there, his wife uh, was off at the train station picking up some uh, uh, out of the country help that they had been dearly missing for a couple of months' time. So, you know, he gets some real challenges up there that aren't all of his own making. Oh, absolutely. Right now he has the one Jamaican cow, Mason, who's been there for years, yes. and there's a lot, and he's seen there only one person working. Plus, I think the very late pruning has probably done a lot to mean that there will be a lot less pruning. Thank you. See we'll follow up on that. Mr. Chairman, uh, you're going to be awarding uh, a contract here tonight on the open space there. We're going to talk about it, hopefully. It's not going to be awarded tonight? We didn't. That's the proposal, yes. Hmm? That is the proposal, yes. The proposal, yep. Uh, did that come from the open space committee? Did they make recommendation? With regards to this contractor, this is exactly who we, who the Open Space Committee recommended. It's LLB. It's the architect that we talked about six months ago. Oh, I'm uh, confused. We talked about the uh, space needs, not open space. Space needs. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking yeah. on the space needs. Uh, Veritech was the one that we spoke about. We haven't had a meeting in so long. It's pathetic. So I just want to know what was the input with the members on the board with regards to this contractor that you want to do a proposal and award them the contract because I do not recall us discussing any information with regards to this and when I saw it on the agenda I'm wondering how in the name where it got on the agenda and what recommendation did the committee <coughs> put into the board here so the only recommendation that I know of was Veritech that the members voted to put in. So, Mr. Sanders, Vertex is the OPM. LLB, Lieb, and I can't remember who the third the third party was that presented to a subset of the Space Needs Working Group. And LLB was the one that was selected with the recommendation from Vertex and from the members of the Working Group. And we Unfortunately, with the transition, with Anthony being the interim, Keith leaving, uh, Nina coming on board, the, the contract 
in all honesty, he probably should have been signed about six months ago, at least four months ago. Um, and it, it wasn't it wasn't executed well, at that I don't recall time. all of what you're saying there okay. on the committee, and I never missed a meet. So this LLB contract you're talking about, I don't recall the committee making a recommendation to the selectmen to award a contract to them. I do not recall. And if it is, it should be in the minutes. I do not recall. Okay. Any other public input? Uh, Mark Rambacher, 205 Parkville Avenue. I just wanted to remind everyone the Littleton Road Race will be coming up on September 22nd over at Bay Park. So register now to get your free t-shirt and try and beat Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Rick Finley, 46 Beatonbrook Road. Just occurred to me, I was wondering what's, what the progress is with the Brown property. Is that moving along? <clears throat> and speak to that. Uh, the status is this: that we've engaged with the <coughs> representative of the sellers. Uh, we have an agreement from them to give us access to the site. We have an agreement with them to give us uh, various design technical information. Um, there was some test pitting that was done out there. Uh, the site walk has been a little sketchy to pin down a date. Um, I've met with Julie Rupp, who's the CONSCOM representative to our sort of working group on it, uh, and Amy Green, uh, and we are working on finding a date. I think last I heard that was tentatively scheduled for this Friday. Uh, Amy has prepared a list of appraisal uh, companies that could prepare an appraisal for us. We're working on getting that appraisal process going because it could take a, a reasonable amount of time to get the appraisal done. Um, the, what the board has sort of been briefed on by me and Paul is that we want to get the appraisal scheduled um, before we even know if we really want that appraisal because it, it could take a, a couple months to have it actually happen. So Amy is actively working on getting that scheduled. And then once uh, Paul Julie, myself, and Amy Green walk the property. We'll report back to the board and we'll sort of decide at that point, is this, do we want to go forward and pay for the appraisal? Do we think it's uh, viable enough? I expect we probably will, and appraisal's not particularly expensive. Um, and so, you know, we could be a month and a half out from an actual appraised number, but that generally we're there. Perfect. I just, Sounds great. Thank you, Chase. She just I didn't plant him, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Um, the Brown property is the property on Tejada one that backs up to Harwood, just for those that that's right. don't know what we're referencing. Yeah, it's a 23, four-ish acre parcel, uh, more or less 50-50 uh, upland and, and wetland, maybe more like <coughs> one-third wet, one-third dry, but there's definitely some developable component of it, at least according to the the sellers, and then there's definitely a significant amount of um, wetland and buffer space and vernal pools as well. Thank you. Anything else? <coughs> All right, member updates. Ball landing? Check. No. I was going to talk about the brown property. <laughs> um, actually, I did want to say something, Joe. Um, I, w I wanted to thank you, actually, the, for the work that you've over the years getting third Thursday going. Um, I know this was our last third Thursday of the year and we only got half of them in, but it's something my kids have loved every time that they've been able to go to it and we've put a lot of effort into bringing it about and continuing to support it. So um, Park and Rec should be commended as well, but I know it's been something we've pushed. Well, and, I thank you very much. I was going to mention third Thursday because it was the last one of the year. Third Thursday is probably the ninth attempt year. It was something that my wife and I, we brought the idea, we copied it from Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and we brought it back. It's different from Pittsfield, because Pittsfield has a main street, they have bands going, they have local vendors, local bars, that you can go right down the street, but we're a much, much smaller scale. The Park and Rec stepped up nine years ago, and without the Park and Rec running it, it wouldn't be possible, but it, it has been an ongoing. We had 36 vendors this past week, it was probably the best weather we've had all year this year, so it worked out well. And I want to make it, Nina and I also went down to the Lake Department for their electric car 
ceremony. I don't know, give it what it was called, but. There, there was an event for their electric cars and then their um, partnership on electric cars. The presentation was made to us. They sent it <coughs> taking the lead on that. And I think they had hoped by now to have 300,000 electric cars on the road, and they're not near that total yet. But in the state, yes. In the state. So, but they're working on it. We have four electric stations, I think, in town right now where people can charge. Mark can probably talk about that. You use your car. Um, so that's it on that. The other thing, you, did, did you want to talk about the announced the monthly meeting between the COA? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, and just for the purposes of the public, um, and the board already knows this, but the, myself, Joe, and Cindy, as chair, vice chair of the board, as well as the chair, vice chair, and clerk of the COA board, as also with the chair and vice chair of the friends board, have uh, scheduled and, and started monthly meetings to discuss the subject of the senior center project and so that we can exchange ideas in a fluid way and work uh, cooperatively you know, with one another to, to make this process as efficient and effective as possible. I thought it was a great first meeting. Marjorie, anything you want to say? It was great. Very, very, very motivating and it was really a very positive experience. Thank you. Right, moving on. Oh, oh, um, yeah, one this. other thing. Uh, uh, Paul and I had the opportunity to go down with uh, um, Jim Carr of the, the Water Department as well as Nick Lawler of the Water Department um, to testify before, I don't remember which House Committee it was. <coughs> local, local, local affairs, whatever they call that. Thing. Anyway, in support of the, the sewers home rule petition um, that's now been reported favorably a couple times. Um, out of committee, we expect a vote. Well, I don't know. I don't actually know the timing of these things nearly as well as you, Paul. But ultimately, we expect a positive, affirmative vote with respect to the uh, sewer district. So this is the the legal mechanism we need to to have the state put together legislation, a blessed legislation that allows us to have a sewer district, um, and that is one of the the integral steps to to making the sewer happen. That's really specific to the user area um, and not specific to location technology so on and so forth but some of that's mentioned in the uh, well it, it, it certainly was voted in the, uh, <coughs> the spring town meeting but yeah and kudos to uh, both senator eldridge and uh, representative Sarah both testified as well on our behalf and the committee was pretty enthusiastic yeah it, it moved along and and light water has been really great to support us with some of their staff resources to, to help make this happen, um, which I mean, later on tonight we'll talk about their role. Can I just jump in for something? I, <clears throat> um, one of the things that I think we've probably all gotten some either some comments or some phone calls or some emails about the sign of the comment that says Curtis Septic, and a, a lot of people drive by that and how did that get approved? And That sign falls within our bylaw, so we, we as a community need to take a a good hard look at our bylaw and if we don't want a sign like that popping up in our common we need to make changes to our bylaw so I would I would just caution I actually stopped by I saw somebody out there um, picking some weeds they, they put a nice little flower bed under that sign and somebody's out there picking weeds so I stopped introduced myself it was the general manager it wasn't the owner but um, he explained that they they're excited about being in Littleton and so I, I welcomed them and you let them know if they, I told them about their Thursday, they might want to just stop by and just kind of see, get a, a feel for our community. Um, they do want to become a part of our community. So I, I <laughs> first, first blush, I think we all drove by there and said, oh my God, that thing's huge. How did that ever get approved? It's a, it's a stinking billboard. But it is within our bylaw. So um, I would say don't throw, figuratively, don't throw stones at Curtis Septic. Um, they are a, um, a local business that took a building that's been vacant and overgrown for a number of years. They've done a nice job and they've, they've finished that. Now that's that building's going to get back on our tax rolls. So um, I just I, I, I would I wanted to address it. It's kind of not, not the elephant in the room, but a lot of people have talked about it. So I just figured since I had that conversation with um, this gentleman Larry, who's the general manager, he runs the Stowe office that I'd just kind of share that with, with everybody because I know I saw a lot of heads nodding and shaking and saying, yeah, how'd, how'd that get by? So just wanted to give that up to you. Thank you. Okay, item number five, community farm one day, look at license request. Thank you. Why not? Um, so 
I'm Amy Tarlow Lewis, and I'm the founder of Littleton Community Farm, and I'm currently the um, fundraising sort of volunteer. And we would like to run an event on September 14th from five to 7:30 in the evening at the Lumen Forestry Foundation. It's where the farm has its lease. Um, it's going to be a field to fork dinner. Um, we currently can invite 40 people to the event. Because if it rains, we need to be able to go inside the Neff House. So right now we're selling 40 tickets. Um, if the weather beginning of the week looks good, we'll, we will release another 10 tickets so we can have a maximum of 50 people there. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. We're going to be using as many vegetables out of our field as we can. Um, we have um, happy organic chickens are going to be donated to us from a farm out in Hardwick, um, Chestnut Farms, and I've talked to Spring Brook Farm, and they're going to be giving us corn, and when we finalize the menu a little bit more, I'm going to go over to Jamie and talk to her about sunflowers, just some sort of other ingredients, so we're really looking to kind of bring in some of the food from the other farms, because we're so small, we just don't grow everything, so we're looking to kind of resource from some of the other farms in the area, and it, obviously it's a fundraiser event for the farm, um, because we need to pay for all of our bulk food donations, so Last year we grew, uh, we grew and donated 6,000 pounds of food and we brought it to the food banks, um, Catholic Charities in Lowell, Merrimack <coughs> Food Bank, Lewis and Fishes, um, and a few others. And that it really equates to about $14,000 to grow those 6,000 pounds. So that's kind of a big fundraising number for us to kind of match our donations and the money we bring in. Um, so this event helps us cover those costs. So and we'd like to be able to serve one <coughs> beer at the events. So it's a pretty limited event. Um, appetizers and drinks start at five. Dessert will be served at six forty-five, um, and then it technically it ends. We're gonna really kick people out at seven thirty as much as we can because we have about an hour to clean up and get out um, as per the agreement we have with NEF. So it's a pretty limited um, number of people <coughs> in a pretty short period of time. And the tickets are sixty-five dollars each, so it's um, you know it's not like a cheap event where you can just drink as much as you can in a short period of time. So, um, <laughs> so can you uh, give us a background? Who's going to be supplying the bus service? Or? Yeah. So, um, hey, so um, the town has worked um, with the state and the state has a list of um, approved wholesale wine and beer distributors and so we're going to be working with a wine distributor by the name of Hang Time Wines um, which is on their approved vendor list. I happen to know the people that rep for them um, so she's going to help me get a case, one case of wine and then I thought I would just go out to Watch Use Brewery um, and get some beer from them so and they're on the approved list as well. <coughs> And then we buy it, I bring a receipt to Diane Dickerson. So she sees that it was paid for and not donated because we're not allowed to receive donated beer and alcohol. Question by the way. This is, this is second or third year? Second year? Um, we've been doing events um, for a while, but this uh, field to fork dinner is the first time we've ever done this event. So. Because I know we, did, uh, we, we have done the one day. Like yeah, that was like a, a stew and brew event that we do in the of March time. So. And I did check with the uh, police chief about two hours ago and he, he's fully behind us and he's yeah. all set with it. Any other questions? If not, look for a motion. And you're invited. We still have some tickets available. So, mm -hmm. still time. So. Thank you. Vote Marshall. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 14 to issue a special license, also known as a one day liquor license. Uh, to Miss Shannon McGrath for wine and malt beverages to be served during the Littleton Community Farm September 14, 2019 fundraiser dinner between the hours of 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Second. Motion to made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Item number six is uh, retail marijuana next steps. I have asked that town council to be present to Give us a background of what the legal aspects might be and the next steps that we might take and what options we have. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Tom Harrington, Town Council. Happy to be here. 
Um, so, um, as we've discussed in the past, um, this is all very new to this state. So, um, I think we are essentially, we, we did an RFI process. We got four applicants. We moved uh, two through for the board's consideration. And as I, I believe the board's position was that they weren't ready to move to um, negotiations with either party for a host community agreement. So I think what's before you is really just a general letter to each applicant um, commenting a little bit on the process and um, letting people know that, that the process is not over. There's, um, uh, it's, you know, this is evolving and the town is, I think, continues to consider its, its position and, and what, it, what it will uh, look for in a, in a successful applicant. But I don't think we're, we're at any specific stage other than the board <coughs> and the, the final two applicants were not ready to move to an HCA at this time. We do have a draft letter that you did up for us that we, mm -hmm. that we could send out, um, but I wanted to get uh, further comments from our board if possible. If anyone wants to speak up. Just, just in reading the, the letter, I, I think it's, uh, it's essentially what, it's a summary. <laughs> that this is the process that we went through. Um, this is where we're at. Um, I guess the question, from this point is now what? Because we, um, you know, we've, we've got, we had an RFI process, we had people mm -hmm. submit, so the fact that we had certain votes taken in this town, what do we do now? Uh, you know, so uh, if, if somebody else comes into town, whether it be one of these applicants and they either find another location or they um, cure some of the things that we brought to their attention, reasons for not wanting to move forward. Are they able to resubmit? Is somebody else who comes into town or someone else from town that wants to submit an application, are they, you know, do we accept those applications? Do we review them in the same process? I think those are some of the questions that, uh, I could say those are some of the questions that I have. Those are some of the questions that I've heard. So I guess that's I guess where I'm looking at. Some of the comments I, I had was that I thought we had a cutoff date, so I thought we had two applicants that we could work with if, if we wanted to, but not to bring in other ones. That's just my thought. I didn't mean to interrupt. Each. No, yeah. not at all. <coughs> kind of how I uh, was uh, organizing it in my own mind, too, is that we were given guidance that we were free to set our, our own uh, structure to a certain extent within the context of the fact that we're a yes community, and that's, uh, um, you know, that's not going to change unless and until it changes. <coughs> But that we had a uh, an open date, we had an end date, we had the interviews, and we had a vote. Now I I fully expect that we will resume it again. But we don't have an open application period by our actions at this point, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming we will at some point. But I mean I I don't want to revisit everything I said a month or so ago. But um, you know I, I hopefully we would take stock of our process and if there's anything we need to tweak and uh, you know we, we'll do that before we engage that process again and applicants <coughs> I, I would say prior applicants I would be predisposed to say oh, they don't have to go back to ground zero and pay everything all over again and all that sort of thing if that's you know if they're interested in coming forward in the future but um, I don't view it and I guess it was my interpretation interpretation that this isn't just an ongoing thing by virtue of uh, law that we have some uh, we have some latitude under the law to set our own process and we've done that to a certain extent it didn't yield any positive applicants towards our, our two awarded licenses so we're not there yet and we'll have to re-engage it at, at some point but I hope that we will do that uh, you know in a deliberative fashion so do we issue another RFI, or do we, I mean, so we did follow a process, and we had an open and an end. We said no to the applicants that we moved through. 
So, I mean, either no means no and no means no for now. I mean, what, where are we at? Do, do we, because we are a yes community um, and the process has kind of seen its way through, are we now obligated to take any and all comers? I don't, I don't know the answer no, to that. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. So, so and again, you know, this is new to everyone and there's not a, there's not a set of rules to follow yet and there's no case law yet. Um, but what I can tell you is we are a yes community and before an applicant can go to the state to seek a license, they would need an HCA with this board. And before they go to the planning board for a special permit, they need a license from the state and an HCA. So you're the first step in the process. Uh, so again, and, and there's no rules right now, so if you choose to handle that with a new RFI, now or in the future, you can do it that way. If you choose to accept applications on a rolling basis and consider them that way, you can do that. It, so I think it's entirely up to the board how it wants to handle it. Uh, I think it's important, because we are a yes community, that the board doesn't shut the door. You know, I think you, I, I think you need to to in some way, shape, or form along some time frame, and I don't know that there's specific rules on what that time frame is, you need to continue considering applications either in batches through an RFI or individually. And I think that's up to the board. I, I'm of the mind that any delay in this, in addressing this, frankly, only hurts the, the town. Um, either from a legal perspective or from getting applicants of the type that we want. That is, the, the legal perspective is that, that the CCC's um, been pretty clear that towns, their words are, uh, towns cannot be unreasonably impracticable. And if we simply say, well, we had a, a, we had a, a period in which people can apply, we didn't like the ones that applied, were done. That, to my mind, it easily meets the standard of unreasonably impracticable. We are now a de facto no community, uh, contrary to vote of town meeting, and contrary to ballot votes, and risk exposing ourselves significantly to litigation in that case. Um, similarly, on, uh, on the avenue of, of getting applications and applicants that are People may disagree with this characterization, good for the town, but it, at a minimum, as good for the town as possible. Frankly, if we continue to throw up barriers, what's going to happen is the only entities that can clear those barriers are going to be entities that have gobs of money in their pocket. So if, if we required, before we even enter into negotiations for an HCA, a full-on traffic study that costs $75,000, um, we're going to see the exact opposite of what we set out, what we said when we set out, which is local applicants with local interest that frankly care about our community because local applicants don't have 75 grand sitting in their pocket to get a, something else off the ground. So I think either from a legal perspective or from a what is in the town's best interest otherwise perspective, we need to move forward now. And I think that involves looking at and being open to revised applications that as much as I disagree with our determination that the applications were not complete, there's certainly an opportunity for both applicants to address those concerns or at least some of those concerns and then begin the process of attempting, I say attempting, I don't think this is a foregone conclusion, but attempting to negotiate a host community agreement. Uh, with those applicants based on those revised applications. And if what we want to do is hold people's feet to the fire when the, the host community agreement negotiations, then so be it. We hold, them, hold their feet to the fire. Um, but otherwise, we risk, we risk litigation, and we risk getting applicants, and we risk having recreational shops in town that are uh, we want. directly the opposite of, of what we hope to attain. Let's turn up. Uh, you know, the, the cautionary part of what you just said, Chase, I'm certainly very mindful of, but I, I, uh, I'd say looking back in the process we had and looking prospectively forward to the next process, 
two things. I, I think the points raised, and they're raised individually by members uh, of concern for either of the two applicants we did interview, are legitimate. And I don't know that anybody was calling for $75,000 traffic studies on this board, you know, as far as that being a deal breaker. But um, so I, I think that, you know, in the rearview mirror, the you know, the judgment calls there are what they are, but they were based on legitimate concerns going forward. I think rather than just hitting the restart button and doing it all again, I would like to I think that before we started it again, the board takes stock of how what was good about that process, what wasn't. It was, there was we had no precedent, so I mean, I, I credit everybody who especially played a role in it, Cindy and Chuck were our lead folks in, in that process. But when you see things like the like the rankings turn around and used against you when you you, know, you try to use it as a way to to gauge uh, the you know the value of a uh, of a um, an application that it, it, it only sounds good to somebody who gets the license not to somebody who doesn't get it and then all of a sudden you know you're you're under cross examination uh, you know as we have seen through some of the correspondence we get uh, maybe we can do without that part of the process we you know we. Uh, if we emulate, and I think in the future I would advocate anyways, a little th something perhaps more, uh, you know, s simple like the liquor license processes that we go through annually. It's something familiar and whatnot. You know, there's no need to create a, a process that just becomes something to be used against us after the fact. And uh, uh, beyond that, uh, we just did a goal setting se uh, session. Unless I'm mistaking it, I don't think it was anybody. This is not a, a topic that's a goal of any board member. So I, I hate if our our agendas get dominated by something that uh, isn't, uh, you know, it's, it's something we have to address because we have an obligation to, and some people might be more enthusiastic about it than others. But uh, I think we've got priorities that we've established, and I would like to see more of our time in the short term spent on those, and when we can sort this one out, come back and revisit it. And that may only be a couple of months' time, but I don't think we're under an obligation to sit here and talk about marijuana retail sales week, you know, meeting after meeting, week after week, in my opinion. I think that is, uh, that is setting aside the, the expressed will of, of town meeting and really sets us I up. I voted for in, it too, both at town ballot. meeting and on the ballot. And... The, the process that I would like to see is it take the two applicants that we have, each member out, laid out their specific concerns, even those of us who, who were willing to enter into negotiations uh, for NHCA with the applicants, and invite them, give them a quick turn. You know, I agree, Paul, when you said in our discussion, you, your opening statement was, this is not the most important thing we're doing. And I couldn't agree more that there are a lot of very important things and this is taking a lot of, um, it's take, sucking a lot of oxygen out of the room. Um, there's two ways to deal with that though. One is to figure out the best course forward and the other is to continue to drag it out for several more months. And so I think what we need to do is say to the applicants, you know, it's August 19th, they've got two, three weeks, you know, whenever our next meeting is, September 9th, 9th or whatever. Um, here are our concerns. It's address them or don't, and we'll reconsider them. And it, it then becomes a rolling process from there. Otherwise, I, I, am, I, I do not want us to be, as Tom said, there, there's no case law. I would rather us not, no offense, Tom, no pay Tom to establish case law on our behalf. Tom's okay with that. <laughs> oh, come on. You like to fight. <laughs> All right. And even with the, with the letter that, that Tom drafted at the end, it, it actually talks about um, and we'll continue working with all interested parties on the issue. So we had, sending out that letter, I, I have no problem with that going out right now, maybe followed by one that's more specific to some of the faults, not faults, but some of the errors that, or some of the areas that we thought weren't uh, completely qualified. So two things to say. This letter, first of all, again, no offense, Tom. Um, this letter says nothing. It, it, it's a polite response. It's acknowledging other, 
the information that was given to us. But uh, otherwise, it simply lists biographical information that we've said over and over and over again. And I understand that the, the goal was to try and thread a needle here and create some letter that we could use as a response, but there's, there's nothing in it. It doesn't, it does, it, it provides no clarity to us, to the applicants, to the public. Um, it, it essentially says, thanks for sending us those notes. Um, and with respect to the shortcomings of the individual applicants, um, again, in, in the interest of expediting this process and moving it along and determining if uh, we can reach a host community agreement that mitigates the concerns that each member has expressed, um, send the applicants to the tape. I mean, we don't need to write it down. We each spent a lot of time laying out what our concerns were. Whether we were willing to enter into a host community agreement negotiation with them or not, there were, there were concerns with both. So I, I don't see any point in sending this letter. It just doesn't say anything. I'm with you on that. Well, I'm not sure what the value is there. Well, I'm going to go back to, if I may. Yes, please. Um, it's a summary. I mean, it's, that's what we started out. You mean call it a biography, but it's a, it's a summary of where we're at in the fact that we said no to both. As far as I'm concerned, we're at ground zero again. We, you know, we, we said no to Littleton Apothecary and to Community Care Collective. Um, and all due respect, Paul, I did have in my, in my goals. Oh. Thanks for reading. You a lot of goals. As far as that goes, so. It wasn't so on right. page one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just what is our plan? I yeah. mean, okay. it, so we said no, now what? So we don't know what the now what is. So it, there's, there's certainly the opportunity for either these folks to reapply, whether it be curing some of the issues that were, were raised and they can watch the tape and figure out what those were. Um, or, you know, perhaps they, they feel as though we gave them advice that that location wasn't something that we were comfortable um, with moving forward with. So maybe they come back with a different location. Um, but also, if, if it's open, I don't think that these two are necessarily the only two that we, if someone else oh, comes I, before I, us, I don't think we can I, say I no agree to with someone else. I completely yeah. agree. I think it, it, it has to be open. So, I mean, I guess we either open the RFI again or we just have kind of the the, the uh, ABC type of approach where yeah. we're, we're the, uh, the granting authority and yeah, someone yeah, wants to as I said earlier, applications, and, uh, application, we don't grade it and we just move forward. Um, I'm, I'm, I understand we're going to be redoing this at some point. My only thought was to take a little time and reanalyze what we just went through and see if there's things we can improve. My gut is that we can... Uh, dumb it down, you know, simplify it, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's a subjective call on five individual members or whoever's, you know, eligible to vote, um, and beyond that, you defend your vote, you know, uh, in deliberation with the public of it. So, I just think uh, if there was a fault to the uh, earlier process in retrospect, as we maybe over overthought some parts of it, made it too complicated, Perhaps. and, uh, you know, that's nobody's fault, I, but I, that being said, um, just to hit the restart button, do it all over again. I'm not sure we're going to end up in a different place unless we, uh, you know, at least I'd feel more comfortable with it. Um, that if we had a, uh, a little, little more thought given to what we might change about that process. And I'm not opposed to starting it again sooner rather than later. I'd prefer we get some other things done first, but if that's the will of the board, will of the town, I don't. Look, go ahead, let's do it. I mean, there's probably some truth to what you're saying, uh, Chase, that. The sooner we deal with it, the better. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but if we end up in a place again where the same two applicants come back and we still know, what do we gain? You know? <clears throat> if it's not this letter, I still think something should go from this board to both both parties, not just have them listen to what we say at a meeting, but have it in black and white. This is this is where we stand, this is where we're going, and I think you could draft something up like that, and that would be our next step, and maybe them have the any the, the two applicants we already have, if they want to engage with the working group again to get that going, maybe take that as the next step. I would love that. 
Maybe your time. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if maybe that's what we don't do. Maybe we don't go back to that again. You know, you guys yeah. devoted a lot of time to it and it uh, well, generated and, a lot of information. But. And I think particularly if if we're looking at the two applications in front of us, I don't know that we need the working group again. In the event that a, a third, fourth, so on applic applicant comes forward, we, I think it would make sense to engage the services of the working group. Sorry, Chuck. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, no, I mean that helped. That helped screen out the people. If, if uh, it was very valuable, people who didn't meet the uh, baseline, they, they weren't credible for some reasons. Right, I, I think that's true. So, I, I, listen, I'm I'm receptive to the idea. Right, that the applicants can't keep coming back until they eventually get the answer that they want. But that was the first opportunity several weeks ago for the Board of Selectmen to say, here's what we like, here's what we don't like. I think it is perfectly reasonable for us to say, by September 9th, you've heard what we like, you've heard what we don't like, give us your best and final. Agree it's a little bit subjective because, uh, frankly, I, I'm not comfortable with the idea of writing down is that time frame fair to other entities that might be out there watching and saying, hey, we watched Littleton, and Littleton cut off their deadline back in whatever it was, May or June. Do we, are we obligated to, to, you know, to invite the rest of the world back in under you know, a reasonable time frame? I mean, we cut off the, the period for submitting applications, and it was only a two- or three-week period. I mean, September 9th. I'm going to follow that logic. I think we have, to, we have to be mindful to let the rest of the world know, other than those sure. people, we haven't closed the universe to those I, I think that's reasonable, but come September 9th, we, we give them an opportunity to give us their best and final. And they've, they've heard of what we had to say once. If they come back with a revision to that or a change to that that is substantive and responsive to our concerns, fine. If they don't, they don't. And we're, I think we're at that point clear this is, this is either all yes or all no, and we're either done with you as an entity um, or we're going to enter into host community agreement negotiations at that point. But that three weeks ago was the only time that they actually heard from us what we like or don't like. <coughs> In a so, to Paul's point, then, is it is the process we give the the deadlines to the two that we said no to? We say best and final by September 9th, But is the process still open? Is it is it an open application period for anybody else that is you know was watching and felt like? I, I think it would be. I think so as well. I mean, I think it's I mean, in in order for us otherwise, but to to not make a farce of us being a yes community. It, it's we have to be willing to consider those things. Um, I mean, I would certainly say that I think the applicants that we have seen in front of us have a substantial leg up. Um, but it's open in here. I would prefer something slightly otherwise, but I can live with that. Is September 9th enough time for? Someone who might be a new applicant. So you're saying just reestablish a new deadline and clean What's slate. Anybody that wants to apply can apply. And the previous applicants can apply. Twenty five. Yeah, maybe we could have the applications due before the ninth, which gives us a chance to look at them. You know, like the Friday before before the next meeting. Yeah, the, uh, the next the meeting after the ninth is the twenty third. So perhaps you're talking about the twentieth. Or maybe even earlier. No. Maybe two you're talking about the sixth before the ninth. I mean, I, my sense is that any anybody who's who hears this today and thinks I'm going to open up a blank Word document and start typing isn't the applicant that no. we want no, anyway. We know so other people at that out point, there. there's no substantive difference between what we get on the ninth or what we get on um, the twenty third. You may well find some of the folks that we weeded out early. Boom, we're shocked to find that and go back and retool their proposal. They're that farther along in the process. And they're farther along in the process. And I think, you know, and two extra weeks to someone who's starting with a blank piece of paper isn't going to change. Yeah, I, I doubt that's going to be the, uh, the, out, the, the outcome. But uh, I think those two weeks at least uh, make it more um, legitimate for, you know, and it's not a, uh, to the, the bigger world. Right. You know, and there's some date in the middle there to make them. The applications do, so that we have time to study them. If we want to refer them to the, the so they might be due on <clears throat> October. So they might be due sometime in the week of the sixteenth. 
for us to take a look at prior to the meeting on the 23rd? Is that it would make sense. Sounds good to me. Yeah, with the idea that the packets get created on Thursday at the latest, then I would suggest Wednesday at the latest. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them earlier rather than later. If, yep. if we could have them Even do the prior on Friday. Monday. Oh, yeah, the prior Friday. Friday the 13th, an auspicious yeah, date. There you go. <laughs> and that also has the ring of, you know, about a month to it. So. There you go. That too. You know, that, that's a process that I could support and give them, make it very clear this. <coughs> It's not like my kids when they keep coming back and eventually hope for a different answer. And perhaps we can yeah. talk if we if we if yeah. that were the framework. Maybe we could talk sometime on the night whether or not we want to conduct the process any different. There you go, and that gives us an opportunity to revisit the process. Oh, well, you were as deep into this as anybody. What do you think? Um, I, I do think we have to do something, um, which is why I had it in my goals. <laughs> to just f come up with a plan. Um, so I guess I'm kind of of the opinion that if, if these folks have already submitted an application and, and paid the, the fees and all that kind of stuff, I'm okay with them amending their application, I guess. Um, but I, I do think that we are now in an open enrollment process. Any, any and all comers kind of have to come through and get the same opportunity. Um, I, w I will say in that though that I'm um, the way that I would approach that is that I would want to move on to another applicant if we say no to one of the applicants that's already in front of us and that the, the applicants that are already in front of us have been here we've interviewed them they've received additional follow-up questions they've received vetting by the marijuana working group etc so to that extent if if we look at these two we say yes or no and if we say no to at least one of them and there's another application in front of us that then goes through a, a detailed vetting i don't think we can do that i don't i mean you, you could you could tell me otherwise but i think that if, if we've said no so we've already done the no so now I think that the slate is clean. So anybody, every application is new. If we want to waive any kind of application fee or that kind of thing, because they've already, they've already come through the process, I can, I can be okay with that. But I, I just I think that um, this is a whole new process. You know, it's we started it, we ended it, we said no, we came out of it with with no fruit. Um, so I think that we're starting fresh again. I, mean, I just, I, I just. And we may get nobody else, but I, don't, I think to say we'll look at other applications if the, the people that we already said no to get a no again. I just, I don't know. I don't think any other. I, I understand that. that. And I, I think it, it makes sense to look at other applications. I w In terms of looking at other applications, though, you know, I, if that's the way we're going to handle it, then I would say they don't have the benefit then of the vetting. Um, I agree. You know, I'm not sure our applicants would think it was a benefit, but yeah. um, well, it's, uh, Cindy and Anna were, and, and Ed, we, we all put a lot of time in, but uh, there was a lot of communication back and forth. To and the applications did improve with absolutely. The additional information. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, I want to get this right. So, the people who already made an application. How would that? How would they be different from a brand new application? They have to go through the whole same process. Without, we could waive the fees, but or do we just ask kind of, them to, to to fix what what in the uh, application? We we called that. I mean, that, that's we can't go back and you know recreate what we. There were there were votes. They got to know. I agree with Chuck's interpretation of this one. I have no problem. I don't want to hold any uh, thing against those applicants. Um, they know they have the advantage of knowing what we found objectionable. They can change it, and I and I and I do think it's fair to waive the fee with them. But beyond that, it ought to be treated as fresh eyes, right. fresh application. You're free to change it however you want. One one we've heard anecdotally may change a location. You know whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's sub a substantial change. I guess I didn't work right. The new person that the new entity that might put an application in, will they then 
do they go to the working group first, like as the others did? Well, we'll talk about that now, or we can talk about it on the night. But well, maybe we do it in the ninth. That's but I just wanted. To Without Cindy here, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm willing to do it if that's yeah. what the board wants us to do, and I'm sure Cindy would as well. And right. Ed's it, in the Eddie's room shaking and his head, yes. <laughs> and, and there should be enough time. It's not, it's not likely to be. Here. Particularly if if we ask him to have that an application in by September 13th. Right. That gives the working group ten days. Right, ten days to take a look at it, provide feedback, potentially get questions asked and answered by on behalf of the working group um, as far as I, I don't <laughs> care whether we call it a new application or a revised application a new application with a waived fee I don't even care if we call it a new application with a new fee and Lord knows we're paying Tom enough for this so we could use the application fees I think that's three right that's the third that's the third one <laughs> Before I open to the floor, is there anything for you want to put forth, Tom? Well, just to, to uh, I think it's an excellent discussion. And just to add, if the board moves on to HCA negotiations, <coughs> that can still be an information gathering period, <coughs> and that can still be an analysis period. Sure. So, uh, you know, you, I, I don't think you need to feel that you're rushing it if, if that's the decision you make. Uh, on an application because you can still say, okay, let's move on to this, but let's have the working group look at it simultaneously. Again, there's no rules here. So I think whatever process that you take to get, to get you to your appropriate comfort level to say yes or no is okay. So I, w I wouldn't get too bogged down in, uh, you know, in doing it this way or that way. You want to make sure you understand the application completely. You want to make sure that you're you're satisfied with the HCA before you move them on. Erica, did you have a question? Yeah, well, a statement, Erica, to Erica for the morning, six Fox Lane. Um, I'm just concerned about the process. I mean, three of you said that the problems that you saw with both candidates weren't problems that were unfixable, that they they should still be able to move forward. And now we're kind of saying, ah, we, no, we're not going to move forward. They have to start all over from square one. Um, you know, I have no problem with a rolling admission, but I feel like anyone new coming in should have to go through the same vetting process that these applicants did. They've, I mean, they've already put in a ton of work. And I'm really concerned with the delay and the time this is taking. And as Chase said, getting what we said we wanted and, and what I would really like to see. If we're going to have, I didn't vote for cannabis shops, but that's what Littleton voted for. If we're going to have them, I would much rather have a small, shop run by a Littleton resident who is going to care about Littleton and care about what we do and what kind of town we are than some big box company and if and they're paying leases and now they're paying security companies I mean I don't know about you I couldn't continue to do that as a private person continue to pay a lease continue to pay employees that without getting any income and have this go on indefinitely. And it just seems like it's not a fair process to those applicants and we're gonna end up with something that we really don't want. Mr. Sanders, you had your can I jump in though? Mr. Sanders, hold on a second. He wants to wants to so Erica part of the problem is the, we're kind of creating the process as we go along. We don't have a process. We're trying to figure it out. Um, and the, the other, I mean, I do, I am sensitive to the fact that these folks have invested a lot of money, <coughs> but it's risk reward. And if, if Paul and I decided we wanted to open a restaurant and we were spending a lot of money and we couldn't get through the zoning board of appeals, or we couldn't get through the planning board or, you know, whatever licensing authority, that was a risk we knew going in. So I, I I understand we can be that, sensitive but there to that. There has to be some sort of timeline. There has to be some sort and, and of we're, and we're, everything is set up in the air. I mean, at, when 
because this is brand new to it. us, Erica. We this is something that we're trying to figure out, and we're know. trying to we're trying to figure it out. So right now, we've said no. So right now, we have no applicants before us, because we've said no to the two applicants. Whether or not people said this is curable, that's curable, this is not curable. Right now, we have <coughs> no's. So right, we don't have anybody that we're going to negotiate in HCA right now. If people want to reapply. Um, they can do that, and if other people want to apply, they can do that, and we have to figure out what that process is going to be to evaluate those folks. Okay, I just think that you're making it really hard on small companies. Is this the end? George Sanders, 682 of Great Board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I, I, I think, one, everybody has a right to redeem themselves. So if the first time they heard you say no, to their application as to what you didn't want to see, then they should have the opportunity to come back to this board if they need to modify or whatever, they should be given that opportunity to come back to this board and present what they have. And then you make a decision, if it doesn't meet the criteria that you want, then it's a no the second time, and that should be the end of that situation with them. But you can't have it both ways. You can't say what you want and then turn around, don't give the people the opportunity to come back to you to fix whatever it is that you say you don't want. And I think that if you take heed of anything here tonight, y'all listen to Selectman Jake because he makes some good points about what we ought to give them an opportunity to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diana and Jurian, Six Strong String Lane. Um, everything that's been said here, you can apply to both sides. We have a divide, a great divide, okay? And, and the side uh, that doesn't want pot shops um, in our town um, a, a bunch of meetings ago because I've been on vacation so I haven't kept up with it. Chuck, you weren't here. Um, what a shame. People came and spoke and they told you all that back on September, um, back on May 2018, we didn't know what we were voting for. <laughs> this is a mistake. The, the process was flawed from the beginning. Um, and um, Paul's talking about um, uh, going back. Um, um, how far back are we going on this? Um, a petition was put um, forth saying that um, a bunch of people wanted to stop this process and actually go back and have another town meeting and re-vote because they were confused. They didn't know what they were voting for or they didn't know that licenses were actually going to be voted on. Um, so um, there's a divide in everything and I think that we need to go back and, and start from the beginning before you can allow applications for licenses or reapply, you know, mm -hmm. I think we need to fix this divide. Um, I, I think everything, you know, if it's the people of Littleton have spoken, and, and I disagree with that, the people of Littleton did not know what they were voting on. So if we went back and fixed that, then, as Mr. Sanders said, if it comes back a second time and people vote to have these licenses and this product in our town, then they have truly spoken. But we, we have two sides here, and, um, and whatever people are arguing for one side can be equally argued on the other side. Thank you. Go ahead. Diana, respectfully, of the 200 plus folks that signed that petition, somebody reported out to us that there was, I think, six people that were on the petition that actually were present at that town meeting vote. So the fe it, it wasn't just one vote. It wasn't just one confusion. So the vote happened in November of 2016. That was the ballot question statewide. Mm -hmm. And so because we were above 50%, we became a yes community. And then different, different things happened from that point. There was multiple town meetings where the planning board had to put in an overlay district. And, and if you listen to some of them, Chuck, they said they didn't realize that we could shut it down the way other towns have. 
And as far as case law, if you Google um, different case law or lawsuits that are going in the state of Colorado, you know, why do we want to open ourselves up to something like that? This isn't adding a little sugar to drinks and giving it to, to children. This is drugs. This is, it's a gateway drug that's on a, um, I wrote it down, on a um, statistical chart that says this is causing mental health problems. This is a huge issue. It's not just a store that wants to set up shop to sell something benign. This is not a benign commodity. Gary. Gary. Uh, Gary Wilson, Wilson one Wilson Lane. Um, I will fall back on, on, on Diane's statement. I, I do understand that half of the story, but I also know that whatever happens in Littleton, you can go 500 feet over the border and, and buy it anyway. So it's kind of like Massachusetts is allowing it. So it's, is that part of our community, 500 feet down the road on, on Littleton Road where they're putting one in right now? So I, so I think it's more of an education thing than anything, wherever it is, if it's in our town or in the town next to us. <coughs> so, but as far as I, th I think, we, until we have two established places in town, that's where we're allowed, correct, too? Correct. Why isn't it just a continuous, open process where anyone can apply? And we say every quarter, every six months, we pull all the applications in and we we look at them. And if it's the same two, and they fix what we, we said that they needed to fix, then we relook at those. If it's a couple others, we look at them all. And then in the next quarter, we're not going to let you, we're not going to meet again until three more months. And then we'll look at them all again at that time until we get the two. And if it never happens, it never happens. If the town's not comfortable, or if you're not comfortable with the board, then I, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it at this point. But we, I think the problem is right now, we don't, there isn't the process. So, but if we knew, just the fact that I'm hearing there's nobody understands that they can still put in an application <laughs> and that the two that did put applications and they don't quite know what to do next. That's crazy to me. So, I, you know, unless something was absolutely voted on by you and I didn't see the vote. Well, but, I haven't got to that point. Okay, so, but I mean, objectionable to the point of it can't be fixed, don't reapply, you're not going to get it then those people should be able to come back with everybody else. But I still think it should be something either on a quarterly basis, a six-month basis, and that's just to meet the, you know, what the town voted on uh, <coughs> years ago, becoming a YAS community, at least to have something continuously moving. I, but, you know, the rest of it, I, I, can't, I can't speak to, um, because I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say right up, I didn't vote for it, but I also know that they're popping up all over the place, so, if I had with work, you know, where don't my children using it as a gateway drug? Well, they can go 500 feet over our town line and, and, and get it. So it, it, it's just it's open. Massachusetts is open. That's how I look at it. But it, the process for Littleton is what concerns me right now. I'm going to take three or four more comments. This is the bottom of the table. I just want to um, say if we're going to go into a town meeting, and vote on something, we should really educate ourselves before we go into a town meeting. You just don't vote on something, yay or nay, not knowing what you're voting for. That's the first thing. Second, these dispensaries aren't just you're going to walk in there and you're going to get high. They're not, one, they're not selling to children. Two, if, if your kid is going to go and get marijuana, they're going to get it on the street at a much cheaper price than what they're going to get it in a dispensary. They're not just going to walk into a dispensary and use marijuana for a gateway drug. That is all scare tactic stuff that people are trying to shut these things down. It's completely wrong. It's not. They're not. That's not what these things are about. And, it, and a lot of different things are used for a lot of different types of things like stress. It's, you're, you're just, you're, you need to educate yourself on what you're, you're talking about. Thank you. Jenny Boyer, 18 Boxborough Road. <clears throat> so I've been to a few of these meetings now, 
and have had um, and have had discussions, and I know there's been a lot of work behind the scenes that has gone on, which is great. I appreciate that kind of work. What I'm seeing that's happening is is that there are people who are still wondering, can we reverse the town vote? And and there's a lot of this argument for shutting it down, not allowing these things, right? So in my mind, and then there's the whole, well, it's already been voted on. We're a yes community. We have to move forward as a yes community, which is what the discussion tonight sounded like. So my question, wondering is, is there some way that we can clarify with the people of the town, can there be a revote? And if there can be, what are the steps for that? And if there can't be a revote, then why don't we all come together so that we're all okay with next steps for being a yes community, right? Like, I don't know, if I had concerns as a mom, which I do, right? Can I make sure that the security is what it needs to be at these places, right? Can we make sure that the cops have what they need to secure these places, right? But also, if I wasn't fully educated, on what was being voted on, when it was being voted on, because information wasn't out there, or I didn't know, or I don't normally attend these things, but now I wish I did, right? <laughs> like, what can I do? But I feel like there's a lot of busyness and time wasted in this, we're not sure, but can we shut it down? Well, we don't know, but we're a yes community now. You know what I mean? Like, can we clarify? <laughs> Well, to, to your point, Ms. Boyer, um, this spring there was actually uh, a citizen's petition that was being put together. And in fact, I and I think several other members of the board specifically offered to help the, the folks putting that citizen petition together um, bring it to town meeting, even though I very much disagreed with that citizen petition, which was seeking to undo the... Uh, recreational retail licensing. And so there is an opportunity to, at every town meeting, or at a minimum <coughs> citizen petitions to come forward that could change things. Um, I think the town also has an option um, to bring something forward, potentially to seek clarity and, and certainty. Um, I'm not sure what I would think of that, but I'd have to think about it a little bit. But I brought it, it certainly that could be done, and it's at, been discussed. Yeah, at the, at the meeting we uh, we had, we voted. I, I, I floated that idea, of, you know, to the extent that the folks who say that they didn't understand what they're voting on, if there's validity to that, well, we have the option of putting it back in the ballot. Didn't seem to be a whole lot of support for that, but that is, as Chase points out, something that the citizens are, you know, free to pursue. I'm I'm more of the mind of what your second um, attack was, uh, Jen, and that's. Uh, you know, we are a yes community, and let's start dealing with it at this point. I mean, I voted no on these licenses for legitimate reasons. You pointed, you, you mentioned one of them, uh, uh, the security issues. That's, you know, real, okay. But that's that's more in the mindset of, okay, it's there, we got to deal with it. And and I think that's what we were trying to do all in our individual ways. And, and the uh, level of detail that was achieved by the, uh, um, or pursued and achieved by the, uh, uh, the working group, I thought, you know, if you looked at what they were asking, it was all those sorts of, of uh, questions that uh, really forced the applicants to um, to show how ready they were to, you know, earn the license. So that, you know, that part I think we were getting right. I'm still, still wrestling a little bit with, uh, you know, how to approach the broader subject of whether or not, you know, it's just a vote is a vote, and you know it's people's obligations to know what they were voting on or not. So I, I you know, I, I, I think the best we can do is what we were discussing earlier, well, frankly, and that's, and that's, you know, well, go back to the process. Like said in the last meeting, we're spending a lot of political time and power on this when we have the sewer in front of us, and like this is really a splitting our town, I think, in a lot of ways. And I think clarification on if you want to see this cut down, these are the steps that you have to take to bring it to vote, right? But time in here, I feel like we're answering a lot of questions and a lot of people are concerned, which I think is good, right? But, but right now we have to work as a yes community, right? And if we weren't spending so much time here, we could be talking about sewer and whatever, but what steps do we have to take so that everyone in the town has a chance to say no or yes, completely and finally? Like if they want to have that chance again. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So, to be clear, 
we are a yes community right now. If we want to, if we want to become a no community, if we want to prohibit it, um, and that's recreational, if we want to prohibit recreational marijuana, we would need to change the zoning bylaw, two thirds vote at a special or annual town meeting, and we would need a ballot vote majority. And until we do both those things, so we can do, if we do one, we're still a yes community. We need to do both to become a no community. So unless and until we have both to keep taking applications. Now, we could also do, let, let's say we get a bunch of applications in, in, in September, we enter negotiations with one applicant and we enter into an agreement, a host community agreement, and that person moves forward and they're operating in Littleton. We could also go back to town meeting and limit from two down to one. Now, I think you're stuck at two. I think two is well, the... We could do one with the same process as zero, right? Which would yeah. be a zoning bylaw and a ballot initiative. Yes, you could. Yeah, you would need both. And Tom, just for the purposes of uh, the point that was made by the resident who was speaking a moment ago, the grandfather, to take the one. your comments one step further, no, in order for a citizen to a resident, a, a registered voter in town, to put something on the town meeting ballot, it's 10 signatures for an annual town meeting, 100 registered voters for a special town meeting. As far as the election is concerned, the ballot vote, that is only something that the Board of Selectmen can place. Is That's that correct? correct. So perhaps. If a resident wished to do it, it could be non-binding, but they could insert in their vote a request that the board take it to ballot as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, mechanism for residents to get this change, should they so desire. Ten registered voters of annual town meeting, a hundred registered voters for special town meeting. The ballot piece would be non-binding, but could perhaps be incorporated into it. and. Contact Chase or Paul for assistance. I don't know. <laughs> you know oh, I floated that idea and didn't get a whole lot of response. I'm, uh, right. I, other than being informational, I'm not advocating it at this point. Understood. Zeldin? Uh, Michael Zeldin, 11 along the Florence Street. Um, <clears throat> I worked in the probably the most uncertain industry, an industry racked with uncertainty and high risk for over 30 years. And what I'm hearing in this room, especially from the board, is the difficulty in dealing with uncertainty, it's also known as risk. And all I can tell you is that I was present at the beginning of something that was far riskier than anything we're discussing tonight. It was the alteration of genetic material, and uh, it basically raised a lot of concerns, not just in towns, but also all over the world. And I just wanted to give you a fair warning that no matter what we do here, the level of uncertainty won't change until we actually grant one or two licenses. That's the fact of the matter is. No one here knows, believe myself, what we talk about. <coughs> when we talk about security, when we talk about parking, when we talk about all the other, including the effects of the substances themselves, we are on, I would say, really uncertain certain ground. And that gives people, shall we say, makes them very nervous and they don't want, they're uncomfortable with that uncertainty. We are a yes community. That's where we are. And by the time we spend the money going back for another town meeting, we will just be as uncertain then as we are now. There's no bottom, there is no body of facts that are going to show up in the next two to three to five years that's going to give you a level of, give any of us a level of, oh, that's all right. It won't reach the level of cigarettes. Mike. Nicotine, it won't reach the level of alcohol. Mike. That took almost 50 years. Wait a minute, Chuck. Comments, you're comments, one of the comments to the chairman. Mike. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck. Comments Chuck, to the Chuck, chair. Chuck. Respectfully, Chuck. comments Chuck. through the chair. I'm, you shouldn't be having chair. conversations with people in the audience. They're the ones who are uncertain along Mike, with you. Mike, it's through the chair. Respectfully, you know the chair. this. The chair. All, all I'm saying to you tonight is. The process, there's no rule, unless Tom says, that we can't simply invite the two applicants who, who made it through the first muster back. Is there a rule, Tom, that says you can't go to the original two and say, come back, and we would like to hear more about your plans for security and parking? Because these are sure, these are sure fire businesses, unless the folks themselves don't know how to run it. So the risk has to do mainly with the things we don't know about. And the only way you're going to know it is to give it a try. A couple more. The lady in the back. Hi, 
I'm Lauren Gorba from uh, 29 Robinson Road. Just wanted to kind of echo the thoughts um, about a process, a continual process of this application, perhaps, right? So I think it's the onus of the board to make the best selection, assuming that we are a yes community, that we are, you know, not assuming that we are, we are a yes community. Let's assume that we are moving forward continually as a yes community. I think it's the onus of the board to make the best decision of who those two retail stores will be. Um, so to allow us to more comfortably say no or give constructive feedback, if you will, and ask for that brief submission, if there was a process of either every quarter, every six months, where new applicants would be um, considered or the reapplication, um, that I think would just make this process a little bit more comfortable where we could search for that right those two right establishments, not just say yes to the first two that come in. Um, and again, I, I know that we're creating this process as we go, so I just wanted to throw that out there as a consideration, just like you, you know, was um, said before. But Mr. Mullen, I just wanted to say that I'm happy to continue to serve on the working group as we go through the process. So it takes a lot of time, but I'm happy to do it. Okay, thanks. Well, one more. That's. Judith Taylor, 23 Neshoba Road. Um, I understand the importance of a process. I totally agree we need to have one. Um, and I'm curious, since we've been issuing alcohol licenses for ever, uh, has anybody looked at that process to see if we can use some of those pieces and parts so we don't have to start from scratch? That was in your original guidance. Yep. This has a, a, an interesting additional layer, which is that, strictly speaking, in the alcohol world, the Board of Selectmen issues those licenses. In the cannabis world, the licensing authority is actually the state. It's only the, the town's prerogative to enter into a host community agreement. So uh, we looked at it for parallels, but it's, there are some meaningful parallels. The host community agreement, which is the point, the decision node that we're at right now, is a, a unique characteristic of cannabis. Is there, as far as the timing and whether it's a continuous process or one time, though, is that something that could be lifted from the alcohol policy and the way you guys do it in licenses? Just, I'm just they asking. They have specific or even from deadlines. From the Board of Appeals process. I mean, these are businesses trying to do business in our town. Use that, use that as a base before you get into the specifics of the marijuana industry. It's just rolling, correct? Like the licenses are just rolling. Mean, well, well there's this timeline, so we have to we have to meet though. Yeah, right? there, I mean, I think. It, summarizing everything I've heard and everything I've learned, I mean, certainly with liquor licenses, there are specific statutory deadlines and requirements. Mm -hmm. Without the same kind of precedence and case law and various other issues, I could see why there might be difficulty in just pres using the same prescribed methods and same prescribed timelines in this kind of situation. <clears throat> but that's the board's decision, not certainly not mine. All right. We'll end up good. Yeah, I was just going to say, having having heard the, uh, I'm, and I'm glad we heard it, found very valuable the input from folks, even although the opinions may have been divergent. But I'm left with the notion that I think the track we were heading towards before we got public input is um, probably a right way to go, um, or one that one I'd feel comfortable with. You know, the um, September 23rd and the prior deadlines. Waiving the application fees for those that had already been through the process, but opening it up to other folks, all that kind of stuff, engaging the the uh, um, the working group if we do get new applicants, perhaps discussing on the ninth, our meeting on the ninth, paring down our process to make it simple and more like perhaps the liquor license process we go through, not overthinking it, those sorts of things. But I mean, all those pieces put together. Um, yeah, I, I feel comfortable at least it'll put us in a position to make the right decision. I also think on the 9th it might make sense for us to discuss what hap what's the next step it, if we say no to applicants, right? right? It, it's one that. thing for us to say at this stage when applicants are kind of in limbo, oh, it's, it's a three month. It's a different thing for us to say before we've made a decision, eh, we're not going to we're not going to review additional applications until this date certain. I think that is a more defined process, so everybody knows at that point sort of where we go. So and that keeps us dates. Certainly. Uh, just one minor um, clarification. It, 
going with jokes aside, in fairness to Selectman Gerbig and perhaps Selectman Glavy, if a citizen is interested in, in completing a citizen's petition, truly my best advice is for uh, residents to get legal advice and counsel. Um, and I would recommend a municipal attorney. Thank you. Can I just ask for a question? Are we all set? I think this ought to be in a form of some sort of motion. <laughs> a lot of moving pieces there, but... I could attempt to provide one for you. Uh, Eric, is it, is it quick? Yeah, I just want to know if, if on the 23rd, your votes on all the applicants are no, then what? So is it, is it at well, that the, point? That was, that that was what I was saying, that on the 9th, I think on the 9th we'll have a brief discussion about what what happens afterwards and we were able to have that discussion without thinking about yeah. specific applicants or anything like that it's it's simply process and on the ninth we decide what no <coughs> um something along the lines of that the board of selectmen vote to invite applications to be submitted by september th noon on september 13th um and that the board would waive the application fee of uh, Littleton Apothecary um, Community Care Collective. Would the board wish to waive any others at this point? Well, those are the only two that made it through the screening process. Um, and that the board would discuss this at their September 9th meeting and review applications at their September 23rd meeting. Do we want to reserve? I mean, if, if those other two applicants, I mean, do we, do we want to look at waiving the application fee for them because they have made it through part of the process? I mean, that would be. I mean, what's the application? It's, it's, it's a fifty dollar application. No, it's, it's, it's three hundred bucks. I don't recall. Okay. What did we have a total of four? Is that all it was? Was it four? Yes. Four. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem extending it to those folks. I just don't want to. By by stating flat yep. out that it's just L.A. Yeah. and C.C.C. I, I do think there's a distinction between the, the two and the two, but whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. Matter. Right. Charge them all. Charge <coughs> them all. It doesn't, yeah, don't charge them or charge right, them. Do we have that motion so we can move on? So add um, the Herb Company, LLC, and uh, Colonial Organics to that recommended sure. optional motion. So moved. Second. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hey. Hey. Tom. Are those new cards? Hmm? Are those new cards? No, but would you like one? I would like <laughs> You You don't see a whole lot of teal cards out there. Yeah. That's the stink. Really stink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> item number seven is town building and space needs contract. So it is my understanding that there was a considerable amount of work that occurred on this subject before my arriving to uh, Littleton. And at this point, uh, it's my understanding that we need to continue to keep this process moving. And we have a proposal from Lerner, Lads, and Bartlett's. And I think Cindy and Chuck have reviewed that. I was a part of that meeting back in probably early June with the architect, um, we'd like to get this process started. Anything check or can we just go for motion? The only, the only thing that uh, in, in with them looking at the space in this building and the space of the DCU building, I would just say that, you know, looking at the highest and best use collectively is just something that I would, I would want to for Brian to evaluate. Would, um, would we want to restrict that exclusively to the DCU building? And in other words, does their scope, if there was another building we wanted them to take a look at, would that fit within their scope and budget if we wanted them to take a look at it? I don't think so. Okay. I, did, I did float Indian Hill, for instance, as a, as a possible building that they could, they could take a look at. But. Mr. Rambacher's kids. Right. Uh, Mark Rambacher, 205 Farwell, and I was on the spe space needs. I do remember picking LLB. I don't remember ever deciding on the DCU building in this building. Can you talk a little bit um, about the process on how we 
how what, how DCU and this building came about, why we're what we're doing, what we're expecting now. The expectation is, is that they take a look at the, the this building, look at the envelope, look at what it would cost to renovate this building, um, take a look at the DCU building uh, initially as a senior center, but highest and best use based upon if they, they find something out from looking at this building and they say it's not worth investing in, maybe there's an opportunity for us to do something with the DCU building and, and kind of uh, shift gears. So that, that's when we put together the plan with Vertex at one of the space needs meetings. I don't remember which one, frankly, to Mr. Sanders' point. It was a long time ago. I remember that. Yeah, we, we talked specifically about do we do just the DCU? <coughs> do we do just town hall? Do we do both? So they priced it out separately, and we agreed to use the funds to uh, and my follow-up question is, where, what's the assumption of where the library is in the scope? Is the library part of the process? It, of with and without. Processing? The use of the library as a library and the use of that space if the library were to vacate. So just trying to get, trying to quantify it, to figure it out. Mr. Sanders? George Sanders, 672 Great Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I remember we asked him very technical and look at the DCU building. But as far as information about appointing a contract, yeah, it was talked about that we would need somebody. They would only be the manager, OPM, or whatever mm -hmm. it was there. But as far as us as a committee coming together and saying, we accept what Barry Tech said with regards to this contract. That never occurred. Because if it did, it's in the minutes. And the minutes should be the proof of the pudding. Mr. Chairman, we, we reviewed three applications that were submitted to us. We had requests for proposals for three applications. Lieb was one, LLB was the other one. Did you have any final yet? Yeah. And there was, a, there was a third applicant. And we, we there chose. Was, there were six, or there were four. We, we narrowed it down. Four. Right, there were four. There were four I think we threw Lee. for an interview. You were not, uh, it was me, Cindy, Alan, um, and uh, Kevin from Vertex. Right. So we did the interviews. Right. And we did pick LLB. I do remember that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I, remember I, I don't, were you, right. you were on that. Get a new no, no, I was back to the committee. I remember um, that. We, Excuse. we did it and we reported back. That's right. 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 I, I do have one follow-up question, if I may. Um, so, the DCU building, and the what, what are we we're getting like floor plans and costs out of this? Is that the plan from the LLB? The scope. So what's the, the scope? And and with the DCU building, there's also an additional scope, right? Because it's a building we don't own. So there's the cost of the building. There's the cost of taking a building that we don't own off the tax rolls, things like that. Is LLB charged with that or someone else charged with that? Figuring out what the true cost of the DCU building is outside of the building cost itself. Well, I think similar to the library, you know, the cost of renovating the library, I think it's, it's very similar to that. So the, it's conversations that the treasurer's had, and so it's all part of the same puzzle. But, but there's a separate piece with the building that's a, a cur currently a commercial building that is paying taxes right. that LLB isn't. I think that's a good question. I don't think we want architects making that determination. No, I mean, I think that, that would so we can put that question to the treasurer and the assessor would be yeah. charged with that. Why is the library worried about <coughs> you going to be trying to get the money to build the no, building? No, I'm going to say I have a quick question on this contract. Um, do we have the... There, there's some markups in the contract that I'm sure we can negotiate out of it. Uh, those are usually easy, flexible places to save a little bit of money. Um, are we are we stuck with these numbers? For example, you know, the additional proof consultant fees and expenses are marked up 10%. I mean, we can, I I would be amazed if they wouldn't just say, oh yeah, we, we'll take that 10% markup out. Can we go back to them and um, knock out those markups? Well, in, in, uh effort not to fall too hard on my sword um, I in an effort to expedite this process I did ask the of course we went through town council for the language for the contract um, 
because I don't have the authority to sign this contract, I asked the architect to sign the contract. Uh, so they have signed it. That's not to say we couldn't go back. Certainly it would be an un somewhat unorthodox negotiating situation. I mean, I would say it's a little unorthodox to contract with someone before we have authorization to do that. Um, we haven't contracted. We've asked them to sign the execute. contract to begin the process and the execution process. I, I would just say we, we, uh, I am certain that they would knock those markups out. In the long run, I don't know how much it depends on how much uh, the additional fees might or might not be um, if we retain them to do other services. But I would prefer not to get locked into a 10% markup when we don't have to be. You can vote to that amendment probably right on the floor. We condition that. Okay. So and to be clear, Nina, um, I, I'm not interested in, hopefully they're not watching this, I'm not interested in holding this up, but I, I would expect that you would go back to them and say, <coughs> maybe somewhat fictionally, the board is not going to sign a contract with these markups. You're willing to take them out, right? And they're going to say, yep. And if for some reason they said, no, we have to have those, let's go forward and get the damn thing done. Um, and just so I'm clear, I, think I understand that. where you're coming from. Just so I'm clear, it's not as if you necessarily see markups on something. You're just saying that there is likely a markup. No. Um, additional services, they've got a 10% markup on. Expenses, they've got markups on. So I, I would just... I know when are, my clients... Are we, are we looking at the same... So I'm looking at this document that is four pages long. And I'm, I'm looking at whatever's in my packet. And Fourth I page, additional costs. Um, approved additional consultant fees okay, would be invoiced by a factor of 1.1 times our I cost. I see. So it's really, it's, it's really not the bottom line cost of the total. Proposal. No, it, it's not the number. About, okay. I think that's a very different... Uh, I think that's a very different negotiation than trying to remove numbers on a total fee price. No, they've, they've already got those baked into their lump sum. Um, and that's so, the risk that they're taking on. To so do amend that to 1.0x? Yep. Okay. Uh, so they'll take it out if we I don't. didn't catch it yet. So at the, the end ask. of this motion, you could add something along those lines that would be subject to, but then if, of course, they didn't agree to it, then I'd have to come back to the board. Uh, how about subject to further uh, negotiation by the town administrator with respect to markups? And then leave it to you to do the best you can. If the board's comfortable with that, I'll make sure that we have that conversation. I'm comfortable with it. I think you can probably knock them out. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize the Town Administrator to enter into a contract with Lerner, Lads, and Bartels Incorporated, LLB, of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, in the amount of up to $226,665, excuse me, let me amend that, in the amount of $220,665 for a space need study, which would include an evaluation of the potential reuse of the existing DCU building on Great Road for a senior center and an assessment and evaluation of the town hall building on Shattuck Street, subject to negotiation by the town administrator with respect to markups. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, item eight, vacant positions, assistant town administrator, builder commissioner, and facilities director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we have three positions that at this point uh, are vacant, and uh, I understand that the facilities director has been vacant for some time, uh, and that the board has wanted to go through a deliberative process. I would like to ask the board to go through each of these separately uh, to make it as streamlined a conversation as possible. Certainly if there's an interest to discuss the building commissioner and facilities director together, certainly not trying to augment that discussion, nor would I be interested to do that as a whole. But I think that there is an opportunity to begin by discussing the assistant town administrator position and then perhaps moving on to the others. I also, Anne is also here this evening in relationship to her HR administrator role to answer any questions that the board may have relative to any of these positions as the discussion begins. Uh, in your packet, you will see, for, just to keep rolling, for the assistant town administrator position, 
I have made some proposed changes and have essentially a recommendation to the board um, for your consideration. If we were to agree upon any job descriptions, either as amended or further amended by the board, um, then I would certainly seek and welcome uh, the participation of one select board member, as I think has been customary, to participate in interviews uh, with me and um, any other mechanism that the, that the board felt was appropriate. You know, I, I don't want to do this in a vacuum. I'm happy to do this uh, in a way that we can all participate um, because I want, you know, your institutional and, and otherwise feedback on the process. Comments by the board? I'll start if no one else will. Thank you. Um, I just noticed that the next item on the agenda is goal submissions, next steps. Well, we just had our meeting on goals discussion, a very good meeting too, by the way, a week or two ago. And speaking for myself anyway, my, my uh, the last on the list, but perhaps most important because I think a number of the other ones are already underway is uh, to take advantage of the unique opportunity and I would say obligation that the time presents to revisit issues regarding our org chart and the different possibilities we have for positions, um, vacant positions, new positions. Um, the board had charged Chuck and Cindy um, to look specifically to those positions, the, the new position facilities and the soon to be vacant position for building commissioner, perhaps in the context involving other uh, entities, or however that may end up, I think that's a very worthy process to explore. We had discussions about the assistant town administrator position. I mean, it was kind of created to address one set of needs at the time, and I, we had some, I thought, some pretty good freewheeling thoughts about how to, how to, um, you know, we might envision that position going forward. I'm also mindful that uh, you know if we sit and discuss and explore things for a period of time, uh, there aren't going to be people in the town hall to do the various jobs that are expected. So uh, I, um, you know, I, I'd be in favor of uh, at least in one one instance where I mean, his memo references, if we were to, in the case of the assistant town administrator, um, choose not to. Um, fill that specific position right now, allow for an abbreviated version of the posting to be for an interim assistant town administrator while we look at that position in the context of the, um, of the uh, big, bigger picture organization chart, et cetera. And, and then secondly, similarly with the building commission, and that one of course is critical because we, um, yeah, it's critical that we have a solution for the short term. Uh, but that, you know, likewise, we look to a an interim there. Uh, we, we can't not have that, obviously, so I think we need to have an answer as to whether or not that's doable. But, uh, and I, I think the facilities position is kind of dependent on some of those dis other discussions. But if we just went ahead and posted these positions now, then I think all the other uh, discussion is, is for naught. And, uh, and it's tough to go back and undo things once they're done. Um, last year, just if you remember, I mean, the top position, Keith announced first week in July he was leaving. We didn't get around to appointing the task, even though it was a bylaw that structured what we were doing until right around Labor Day. And it was probably, what, end of September before you folks had your job description out? Yeah, it took a, it took a few weeks to yeah. just get the job description. And we had an interim and, you know, whatever. Uh, and then we didn't appoint until many months later. And but and part of the process that worked really well there that I think we want to consider for this, um, particularly for the building facilities role, is that we we pulled in political entities, uh, but we also pulled in folks from department heads and things like that to understand what they needed and what they wanted. And that that's a yeah. it's a time consuming process right. to do well. I, I and was, especially if we're gonna shift up the org chart. Right. And it, who knows whether we will or we won't, but I, I would be... Or we're willing to I think consider, we'll it. consider it. Consider yeah. it. And I'll tell you, if I, uh, I was inclined this way anyway, but Friday, unsolicited, I had got an uh, email. I don't remember whether the board got it as a whole or not, but from somebody in the Historical Commission saying, hey, I understand the 
building commissioners' positions open. As you know, our bylaws are enforced by the building commission. We have an interest in that. And I hadn't even thought of the historical commission in the context of that. So, you know, not, I'm not sure what role they would have, but they, there's a lot of people that need to be included in these dialogues. Um, you know, and it, it, that's even if we don't change things in my mind. I think we need to, to do that kind. And, and whatever, you know, all due respect, whatever the process had been before, uh, things are different now. And uh, I think we should think of them in those terms. We've had a, uh, you know, have had a couple of significant things occur over the past year that I think require that the board uh, enga become engaged um, in structuring town hall and the positions there. And I think we can do that in an orderly fashion where we provide professional interim support while giving ourselves the time to decide what we want to do in the bigger picture. I guess my, my biggest concern out of all those positions right now is the building inspector. And can we find a quality person that's going to be interim? Because obviously, in the line of work, I'm, in, I'm there all the time, but I hate to see anything held up because we don't have anyone there. I mean, what process do we go through to find someone that's uh, interim? Can I ask you? I would. Or can I just. I would caution. I mean, you, I would caution. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. This is a really difficult position sure. to be in. That's how I'll say this. <laughs> but, um, I would caution asking for advice on this position in particular. It's as broad and vague as I can be right now without putting anyone in any difficult position. But I'm positions. telling you, Okay. I'm not talking yeah, about... No, no, I understand. Whether or not I understand. There's a pool. I, I, did, I just wanted to ask this. Sure. If he's in that line of work. Are there retired people that might be able to come in and say we wanted to go the route that Paul just talked about and take all that time that, that was just explained to, to do the reorganization, whatever. Obviously, we need someone in that position. Uh, we can't be someone, I know you tried to talk to uh, someone from a local town and they can only go two to four hours a week. That's not going to work out. So is there something out there that we can draw from? There are retired building commissioners um, and building inspectors out there. There's also some building inspectors that work part-time in other smaller towns, um, probably a good distance away. Um, I'm part of the NBCIA, Massachusetts Building Commissioners and Inspectors Association. I can certainly speak to some, uh, some of the uh, board members there to see if they have any recent retired members that would be interested. I also just went through an interview process in Concord where we had 18 applicants for one position. And a few of those folks were actually retired looking to get back in on a part-time basis as well. So I could go back to that pool, but I'd be happy to share that information with Nina if required, if you need it. No, I'm just concerned about that position being empty. Uh, no, I, I very much share your concern. Um, what would be the t timeline on bringing in an interim? Because you had also mentioned to me in one of our discussions uh, in an intermunicipal agreement. So pros and cons of one versus the other, timelines on one versus the other? So um, as far as posting the job, you know, I'd, I'd ask Anne to speak to the timing and timeline on posting a job and how, it, how long the process might take. Um, regarding an intermunicipal agreement, you know, one option is to, at this point, just to set the baseline, I guess we've shifted to talk about building commissioner. Oh, um, no, no, I, the, that's the board's prerogative. Um, shifting to speak about the building commissioner, considering the fact that September 3rd is our current building commissioner, his last day, and the fact that our, I've learned today that our, um, uh, Intermunicipal agreement, I assume, or somehow other agreement with the town of Harvard's building commissioner really would only gain us two to four hours per week, which is not going to be sufficient for the workload that we have here, which is estimated to be in a getting by situation, 15 to 20 hours per week. That said, no matter what is done this evening, it is my hope that the board will authorize me some latitude to either enter into an intermunicipal agreement with a nearby community or multiple nearby communities and or post an interim position because there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to need that at this stage. 
You said and or. So in your mind, could you pursue both paths <coughs> simultaneously for a period? Sure. Well, we figure out which is yeah, actually the uh, best it's, path. It's, and you and I discussed this, and forgive me for not mentioning this piece, it's not typically ideal to post a position we're not going to um, move forward, but I think that's very different for a temporary situation. Right. You know, so I wouldn't advise that on a permanent type situation, but I think this is different. We're going to face a September 3rd problem, whether we're posting for the building commissioner as written now or whether we rethink it, we still have that problem. I absolutely agree. I think the bigger challenge from my perspective is I do expect that because we'll be working on an interim basis, you have a couple of considerations in front of you. The first is we have unique zoning bylaws. Theoretically, every community has unique zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. So that building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer is going to have to learn our unique zoning bylaws. That's going to be the case whether we have one or another, but the less time that we have between now and when we actually hire a zoning official, the more consistency we're going to have and the less variations that there are going to be, and perhaps, I hate to say it, the less complaints that there might be over a period of time, because <coughs> with the process where we may be right now is we may be in a situation where we are cobbling together a couple of different resources to make it happen. I'm glad to hear Ed's input on perhaps that there is some availability. In my experience, and, and this isn't necessarily to be contrary, I've heard that there's a shortage. I have witnessed the shortage. There's been multiple discussions and forums about a shortage in building commissioners in the Commonwealth. The difference between building commissioners and other positions specifically, and while there are some, there is some ability to have room with a building commissioner, is you, you're required to have a license, a building commissioner license, and you can't hold that position for more than 18 months unless you have that license. And so. Unlike hiring, I'll use town administrator as an example, unlike hiring a town administrator without prior experience, you really can't hire a building commissioner without prior experience because, and so for that reason, the pool is inherently narrower. And so I think that there's a sense of urgency and I would encourage the board to strongly consider, and I would have made these comments in my opening remarks if I was touching on if we hadn't screwed up your schedule. No, no, no problem. <laughs> um, but I want to make sure that you all know that I do think that the candidate pool is likely to be narrow for any situation. And I think finding a building commissioner may be, and I don't think it was much broader or opener, much better for necessarily a finance director, to be honest with you. But I think that the sooner we can move on this process, the better positioned we're going to be in general. And I do think that the busy season is not coming to an end anytime soon. Um, building commissioners are, at this time, getting more and more requests from builders so that they can put in foundations before, I hate to say it, the ground freezes. <laughs> but I think there is some sense of urgency that we really do need to, and, and it if would be pool, my preference. If the pool's small, moving quick on it doesn't really change anything. I mean, if the pool's small, that informs me to the point that Perhaps we think even more about making this a more attractive position, um, because if we, you know, we, we want to make sure we get the best pe person or or people in there. If it's you know these positions um, ending up in the same department uh, for administrative purposes, uh, also not to be lost in all this is you know unfortunately you know we probably could have anticipated Roland's retirement, but you know he he was under no obligation to tell us any sooner than he did. But uh, he's been there, what, 30 odd years? And I don't want to, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable saying he's been there 30 odd years. We haven't had any meaningful discussion about um, is our structure, the performance, all the rest of it uh, the way we want it? Uh, or should we take a month or two to study that in all the different ways that we can address it and then feel comfortable saying, Yep, okay, I like the job description as it is, or nope, we got a different proposal that incorporates legal requirements and other models that other towns may have, and pull the trigger on that. Either way, whether we do it you know, quick or not, we're going to end up with an interim. You know, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor, as, as Chase uh, indicated, as you often, I guess, is 
giving you the latitude to go either direction or both in terms of a interim if that's what the best solution is or or one or multiple intermunicipal agreements but I think none of the information about the pool out there changes the importance of getting the job right and taking the time to analyze it right in, in my mind I don't discount any of your comments whatsoever and I completely agree with the importance of making sure that this position is what we would like to do structurally what I'm trying to impart on the board is the sense of urgency that I feel that we must prioritize this position and the analysis of this position sure. so that we can get it over the finish line um, as quickly as possible. Can we set up uh, as a board uh, a process that we're comfortable with for bringing on the interim? That uh, Let me say this. I would be comfortable with if, if myself or, or one of you guys was involved or Cindy was involved with... Um, Representing us in in identifying the oh, interim. We I, what I don't want to do is Chuck and Cindy to 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 look at the bigger picture and I just would job description. Yeah, yeah. I, make, I guess what I'm saying the same is process. I would like to to give authorization, have some rep, some say through a representative that yeah. we appoint. Maybe that's Chuck or Cindy. I think that makes good sense. But then, it for the interim anyway. We as a whole board are now out of the way, and if if they find somebody next Monday, yeah, I, I don't mind giving me. a, a uh, vote, uh, you know, authorizing Nina to enter in as long as she runs whatever it is solution back by us, and you know, it, it, for the interim, yeah, or both. I mean, the intermunicipal agreements, or even a posting, yeah, you know, yeah, in interim posting, whatever you decide to do on that, the short term, give you know, a authorizing vote with you know the understanding that. Let us know what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, I as if so. If we're going to parse this for a moment, just parsing it as far as the interim solution, because we all agree that we need an interim solution. That's two and a half, less than two and a half weeks away. I, I am not, and I mean this in the most fair way possible to myself. I am not sure how much latitude or room I'm going to have to advise you all. It may be that on September 3rd I email you and I say, if you're agreeable to this, that here's what I had to do because I don't know as though th these things, if you think about it, in order for another town to sign an intermunicipal agreement, unless they are a town manager form of government, that individual now needs to seek authority from their board of selectmen. These things take time and they don't have it overnight. Right. So I, I can't commit the same thing we discussed in a prior discussion, which is I'll give you a week's notice and no, you tell I, I, me if... I think we were just discussing something that would uh, understood that and that yeah. gives you the authority in advance, but I would say the only distinction I'd make between what you just said and, and what we were discussing is before you pull the trigger, you know, the same same day, this is, you know, this is what I found to be the best solution. You okay with it? Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to try to give as much notice as I can. I'm just trying to be fair to myself and not As long as it's within the parameters, and the parameters aren't, you know, there's only so many things that can happen. Either we're going to get one town, several towns, and, a, you know, a mix of it, a retiree or some other legitimate uh, person. Whatever you find there that works to your eye, you know, I, I'm all for giving a vote right now to, to, to bless that, and uh, but and just as a common administrative practice, let us know when you find that solution and say, okay. Right. And, I mean, to the extent that a solution presents itself sooner, you can inform us more and give us more time, great. Right. Absolutely. So there's a second motion here that could be used for that person purpose. Um, and it basically says that you authorize the town administrator to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with one or more nearby communities and or to hire a temporary building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer during the period for which a vacancy in this position will occur. Sounds reasonable to me. Finally. Okay with that. Yeah, look at a deep thought. Let's fell asleep a second back now. You ready for a motion to yeah. yeah. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize the town administrator to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with one or more uh, nearby communities and or to hire a temporary building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer during the period for which a vacancy in the position will occur. Second. Motion to be made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Should we come back to the uh, Yes, I was suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I mean, how how is that different than the building commissioner question, right? We, we're still sort of trying to pin down what exactly we want the AT, ATA to be doing, so an in interim makes sense, right? Yeah, I, I'm assuming you didn't mean the language that you actually I put in I did not, yeah, no. Yeah. No, move, I don't want to give up my own position, no. <laughs> Move that the board is like invoke to support the posting of the town administrator. <laughs> <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> Freudian slip there, maybe, no? Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, quite frankly, and, and I think depending upon the, t I, would, I would suggest that we put timelines on these things to the best of our ability. Go timelines can be very much goals, and goals can be met sometimes and they can be missed, and I'm completely knowledgeable about that. From my perspective, to go through the process of posting an interim town administrator, assistant, <laughs> here we go again, assistant town administrator position, going through the process of hiring an interim assistant town administrator, the, that time might be better served in other avenues rather than going through the process to bring that person on board and then going through the process in the future to bring the next person on board. I would much prefer, if it's possible, to put out a timeline in which we anticipate we can reasonably consider and resolve the posting job positions and, and identify exactly what we want so we can post them and then I can really be in a better position, a more informed position, to give you my best recommendation on whether or not we should do an interim or not do an interim. Because if in one week or, or three weeks' time we're prepared to post the assistant town administrator <coughs> position, I'm not sure I would recommend an interim. But if we expect that it's going to take us a few months before we're able to post an assistant town administrator position, then perhaps I'd be inclined to say that I think we need an interim. Okay, but in that just thought occurs to me on the fly, but if in that scenario, wouldn't you at least in the short term, and especially if it drags on, benefit from having additional administrative help of some form? Certainly. Right. But every everything has its balance. How much work would need to go into it to make it fruitful? And sometimes the amount of work that goes into it only balances at 50-50, and I, I'm a net neutral. I don't want to be net neutral. Well, I was trying to take a cue from what you had said and say, you know, you know, go through the process of hiring an interim assistant town administrator who may well think that they're, you know, gearing up for the actual job and then we go ahead and take it in a different direction and then you have to do that hiring process again. So if that's what you're looking to avoid and what's the biggest need is, is another administrative body to help you in the office until that position's defined, redefined, then that should be a simpler hire, I would think. But I mean, I don't have a preference either way. Uh, but I'm willing to support it either way. I'm I'm very much interested. I'm willing to, to let Nina run her office the way that she wants. Yeah, it. right. Um, but Whatever it almost sounds like you're willing to, you know, tough it out and go without the assistant. If you know, yeah. well, it depends on what the period right. of time is. Yeah, I just I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, we've I just thinking back to the discussions we had. And there's been things floated as disparate as change the position to a projects manager and and, and having it be more uh, you know modular you know approaching various modular big projects or to to shoring up one aspect or another of the overall administrative office's job say you know the the financial interface with the finance department we'll see you know, another thought too on on the budget side of things um, and there's anything in between who knows uh, how much time does it take to work that out I don't know I mean I don't I don't mind putting as you say some goals even to the extent that it's on the agenda every week until we uh, sort it out but uh, I don't know whether I can sit here today and say yeah we'll have that all worked out in one month or I, I guess my sense half. is I if you make me decide right now I would rather go with an interim TA and have that TA job description discussion simultaneously with the building commissioner projects. I agree. Because yeah. I think there there could be some depending overlap upon how one builds, you may not have a need anymore on the uh, on the other. And so, if you're going to make me choose one or the other, I I would say interim ATA and. Um, 
and then a little bit of time to consider it. But I mean, if you tell me, Nina, that that's not what you want, and and that's not what makes you most productive, okay, I'm, I'm that, that good to not, back out. To that's you. not what I would want. Okay. Not at this stage. Not based on the amount of work and upcoming tasks we have and the amount of resources that get taken away by just any one subject. Sure. I'm really truly at a point where I think we need to move as quickly as possible without affecting the importance of reviewing the subjects. Well, I'd personally take it your word but also recognize that you've got needs in that office and we've got budgeted money for that office that if you need to hire uh, you, you get up tomorrow morning and say, I, I want a third body in that office who can help out administratively. Do it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, all of my statements are predicated on the fact that we're going to come up with a timeline that makes sense. Yes. Um, and to me, I think anything over a month from today, I may end up recommending interim town administration. Because Fair if you think I mean, about it. It's going to be a long enough process. Well, it is absolutely going to be a long enough process that if we're going out more than a month before we're able to post the, this or these positions in general, I think that w w we need to look more midterm than we're looking short term filling in solutions. And I. I feel comfortable enough with my understanding of this organization as short a time as it has been based on my focus of the organization, based on my regular discussions of the organization with various people, including but not limited to our HR administrator, our interim finance director, and others, um, as well as my background and experience in organizations to say I know pretty confidently that this assistant town administrator position is one that I believe we can move forward with tonight. But you may all want to go through the process of getting comfortable with that yourselves as well, and I understand that. It can, <coughs> the, the job description you have here that, that you've redlined, mm -hmm. can we use that as a basis to try to determine what, what our needs are? We, Absolutely. Oh, of course. But I guess I'm trying to how quickly could we get that part done? Like, I do want her to be able to run her department and get it going as, as soon as possible. I mean, it's going to be like I have an answer. I mean, it's going to be a group discussion as to whether or not we, you know, uh, what, what comes out of the uh, recommendation that Cindy and Chuck look at in terms of that department. Does that impact this? We know, you know, they come back with a proposal that that incorporates some of that, I don't know, planning project stuff so we no longer, you know, would have, a, you know, we've got a body maybe identified who's responsible for that, so now, you know, maybe we should focus in a different direction for that position. I mean, right now this is pretty general, and that's well, okay. I, I think that works. It gives us the, that was my thought too, that it, it gives us the latitude to decide six weeks from now, hey, you know what we want? Uh, this we want to accentuate this skill set, or we want to accentuate that one. Even look, I don't have a problem with that either. Except that I think we ought to be honest about that in the posting. That you know, you you, you may show up on job uh, for the job on day one, thinking it's this, and then you know, a month later, it's, uh, <laughs> there is a different. sentence in there for that purpose, and it was actually in there before, um, in, in the original version, and it reads. <sighs> The assistant town administrator may be assigned responsibility for supervising specific departments. In addition, there may be limited coordination and supervisory responsibilities required in the conduct of project management. We could broaden that and add another statement that says, um, and, and these, this is typically in any job description, performs on page, well, I guess it's the, I don't know what page it is, the third or fourth page at the end of the minimum qualifications. <coughs> Sorry, the essential functions which says perform similar or related work as required. It's not unreasonable not to state every single duty of the individual. What I think we're looking for an assistant town administrator here is somebody who is, well, this person would have a lot of skills. Among them would be the flexibility to be assigned and willingness to work with the town administrator and the board of selectmen to make modifications that fit within the scope and the grade of their position on a rolling basis. On a, just that, that flexibility is going to be mm -hmm. 
you know, any candidate <coughs> ever out there listening to us right now, that's one of the things we're going right. to be looking for, that well, flexibility. I mean, isn't that a, the sort of fundamentally the job description of an ATA, Absolutely. right? They, they've got a shuck and jive. Any duties that the yeah, town right? administrator assigns, if, period. If that's the context that we're going to take it in or keep it in, then it's fine. But if we decide to do it differently, it's not. That's, in my mind, uh, otherwise you're, you're kind of foreclosing the discussion of, doing something different with that position, if we just go with this. But. The reason I looked to assistant town administrator was because in this organization, if I were to take a vacation, I would need to identify a natural mm -hmm. next person in command. And I think we can very much have an assistant town administrator titled in that manner and have them work on special projects. In fact, I held that very similar role in Tingsboro um, a sh seven years ago or so. and. At this stage in the process, I think we can easily find someone, uh, well, candidate pools are still small here too, but I think we can find someone who not only has the ability to, to move projects forward, but also to be able to fill in in the event that, you know, I was on vacation for a week or two and or had to be at a conference for a week. However it's described, that person's going to have that authority so that should be a mindset I think in hiring but if we're, if we're deciding that we want the person to fill that position to have a particular skill set to focus on a given thing this does not direct in that way so if we have a brilliant thought down the road that we want this position to be the you know the clear second in command and do the functions as described here you know, as general as they are written, and they're about as general as you can be, that's fine. But if we decide that we wanted a specific, you know, policy objective or, or technical function to be a part of that position, and you don't include it, then, you know, you're, you're foreclosing that opportunity. Understood. That's, that's I, my... I think there's a possibility to get you know, special guidance or advice on those kinds of situations. I don't know as though we're going to know the unique depth subjects of what we may need a year from now or five years from now or hopefully seven years from now when this person is with us as well. I, I think that you're looking for a person who's capable of doing the research to become somewhat of an expert on a subject, and I think that that's what we're looking to hire in these kinds of things. Good, yeah. or, like it or not, town administrators, assistant town administrators, we're often generalists, and we do a lot of often, but not them. always. Agreed. Agreed. But I, I think this is a place, Paul, where perhaps we can allow the candidates to be the guide a little bit. That is, we see a strong applicant with. Oh, we're not going to see them. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? That's we're not. We're proud of that. It's, it's a, the TA's hired. We can involve the board to the extent that the board wishes to be well, involved. Okay, Always. very well. I, I presume the, the board would have some engagement in this process. But nonetheless... Uh, that was, that's not what was anticipated in writing, but I agree with you. Well, uh, all this motion says is to support the posting of the town administrator. I don't think we've talked about it beyond that. But w what I'm talking about is the position structurally right now. That is, we post the position and... We hire the best candidate with potentially the, the right complementary skill set. You know, if we, we find somebody who's really strong in finance, great. That means that Nina can offload that finance piece. But I don't think we want to specify that. Arguably more important position, finance director, we never even saw, other than Joe participating in it, the resumes. We, we met, four out of five of us met the person we appointed the night she was appointed. I don't want to replicate that process again okay. for any of these positions. I, I think that's fine, and I think we should have that discussion. Um, first of I don't think it's premature to post the position and post it generically and allow the candidates to be our guide in terms of their This conversation is memorialized as the context we intend to fill it in, and I'm okay with that. I... I I would like some guidance, and this is the same thing you're saying, Paul. I would like some guidance on what the expectations are. I do not believe anyone requested any copies of any resumes before the appointment of 
our new finance director. No. If I'm given guidance, I'm more than happy to work with the board. I'm also happy to participate in discussions on what the most effective and efficient way to hire any future positions would be. It's not likely that I'm going to recommend that we have a quorum of the board on any initial screening. So I just put those things out there initially. You know, there are some boundaries and barriers, but I do think we can work together collectively to outline the expectations, and we'll meet those expectations. Is it possible for us to discuss candidates? Let's say you create the TA's office, perhaps with the assistance of uh, one or two selectmen, create a short list of maybe three candidates. Would it be possible for us to discuss those candidates in executive session as a board? Unfortunately, the board, the way that the executive session exemption reads, and Tom is here and can correct me if I'm mistaken, it says that the board can appoint a subcommittee, essentially. Okay, so it's got to come out of the subcommittee. That's fair. But there's nothing to prevent all the board members to have access to any resume comes in the not. DA's office, right? So as long that, as that it's under a, a confidential process. As long as it's maintained yeah, under a confidential process. Right. But individually, each member could review them and then with their own thoughts come back and discuss. But in therein time. lies a potential challenge there, too. You can't come back and discuss it unless you're discussing it in an open meeting. Mm -hmm. So because of the way the open meeting law is written, inherently the mm -hmm. majority of the board can't um, decide. Trying can't. to find a way to feel comfortable that we're not being squeezed out of our own process. But, uh, so well, work with me. Well, I, I understand that. I think that the process and the bylaws is pretty clear. And the process states that the appointment is the town administrators and that the board of selectmen ratifies that. I would think just as any other process that the board takes up, two members of the Board of Selectmen could participate in that process and bring it back for ratification. We do that with contracts. We do that with any other subject. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not clear on why this would take a different direction. So when we hired Anthony, we had the two finalists before us, and we interviewed the two finalists. We made our recommendation to Keith. Keith hired Anthony. Certainly, it can happen so, I mean, at an I think, open meeting. I think something like that would be a process that I think we'd all be comfortable with. Now, as to who would be narrowing it down, whether it's you and Ann, you and Ann and one of us, or you and Ann and two of us, um, or whomever else, I, mean, it, it, I think if we followed some sort of process like that, would be okay. Let me, the, the, kind of off the beaten path, shiny object, um, Anthony had a lifeline in Keith. Do you feel comfortable using Keith as a lifeline? Because I think we're comfortable. Am I, am I speaking out of turn here? Yeah. I mean, he knows that he knows how to navigate Littleton, so he may be forgetting the attorney has report. I mean, you know, there's limits to to that too. Well, as on a consultative basis, well, just, just well, to help I assume that's going or, on anyway, right? You, you can talk. I, I, I have met with Keith recently. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I would just I, not that I think you should be sitting in Anthony's seat and being the interim ATA, but I think that's a resource that we right. can. Right, and the, and the budgetary expenditures associated with that are minor compared to Correct. not paying Correct. an ATA salary. Right. Right. George, just something quickly? Yeah. George Sanders, 672 I want to go back to uh, the commission, uh, the building commission there. I was wondering. In uh, the job um, subscription write-up, the structure of it, can we make sure that the billing inspector refer contractors and developers to the Commission on Disability? Because when uh, he told the contractor that you didn't have a Commission on Disability here, and the contractor went to the state, and when we found out about it, it was about Shaker Lane with regards to the elevator down there. And we wavered and told the state to go ahead because they were going to try to get in before school started. So we need to make sure that stuff come before the Disability Commission here with regards to developers and contractors to ensure that the citizen in Littleton is been met in terms of the ADA in regard to the state. 
with the disability requirements on building renovations and so forth. Okay, I'm back to the town administrator. Can I propose a structure? I mean, we were just talking around it. Why don't we ask Nina to, well, why don't we ask Nina to work with one or two, I'm open to either, members of the Board of Selectmen and what other members of the professional staff she thinks is important to identify two finalists and then at least two finalists and we as a board meet with those two finalists. But that's our structure. I don't mind that being the end game. I, I still think uh, we all ought to be taking a look at what the talent pool is. I, absolutely. I, to be perfectly honest, that may not rise to my... I may not dig that deeply, and I would like to have the prerogative to do it or not as I see well, We always have that prerogative. Right, right. Um, but that gives us a formal structure, and then we should all have access to resumes and whatnot anyway. So. And then that allows us to go forward with the posting. I favor the generic posting. In the interim, we can, in the, you know, at minimum, what, six weeks or so, between when that, between today and when we see the resumes or the complete set of resumes, we will have had an opportunity to figure out if there's a particular talent, a particular skill set that we really want to accentuate. We'll be guided by what's available in the talent pool. We have the interview evaluation and interview process set up, and then ult recognizing ultimately that it, it is Nina's appointment, not ours, but um, but that we have to work with this person extensively, and so we, we want to play too. I, I'm, you know, I'm fine with that. With the, you know, uh, uh, still understanding that everything was said tonight, you heard it, we heard it. So. So the first thing you need, Dina, is a motion to post your job. Yes. I mean, really, I. Well, yes, please. Move that the board take yes for an answer. <laughs> um, move that the board of selectmen vote to support the posting of the assistant town administrator as amended, subject to a review of the grade by the personnel board. And then I added something here in case oh, the sorry. board wanted to identify one or more members to participate in initial interviews with the town administrator. That guidance, maybe that would be. I would like to have Cindy here for that discussion. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, yeah, leave that up. Sure. We, we, we we verbalized that we're going to have a more involved role there. In, in second. Uh, yeah. Motion we leave off that sentence. I'm with it. As second. Is. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So maybe the harder one now, building commissioner. Where did we find ourselves on that? I don't think we actually took the. Not oh the yeah, permanent. we did the motion. Yeah, we, voted we didn't do the permanent portion of it and decide on how we were going to do next steps on the permanent portion. We did the second motion. Oh right, or, with the interim. If I, I may be. I mean, I guess that was contingent on the Chuck Cindy Chuck subgroup Cindy. coming back with okay. some recommendations. Okay. Getting a lot of assignments. <laughs> I mean, I think this is one you're already in, but I'm happy to. Is this something that we could try to put some time frames on? Yeah, um, let's do that. Uh, I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Could we? I mean, the meeting of the ninth is technically three weeks. Is that correct? One, two, three. That's three weeks. Is that a reasonable period of time to potentially? At least discuss it again. Oh, yeah, if get not, an update. I, would, I mean, it's not, also it's also around holiday weekend. I don't know who's gonna sure. do whatever, but but I, I'm it should be on the agenda. Along, then definitely. I'm th and that's wonderful. Um, I'm also thinking more along the lines of if we can make that the goal date to have discussion and potentially either post it or post it at the following meeting. I guess here's the structure that I would like to see. So at that meeting, we discuss as a board some verbally some proposal that Chuck and Cindy put forward in terms of sure. organizational structure then give them two more weeks or until the subsequent meeting to actually consolidate that discussion put it I, I'd really like to see it down in a written form here's what it yeah, looks like especially since it's not exclusive to these two positions it, the whole reason we're doing this is it's a broader context review which is going to involve getting around talking to a bunch so of different I, boards I actually see this several meetings out before we get the posting done so early September we talk about it two weeks later we have a written you know form and substance um, the subsequent meeting is when we actually have the posting prepared that is consistent with those written recommendations, and it would be that meeting, two meetings after September 9th, so probably early October, 
where at a minimum uh, that that would be the minimum amount of time until we're ready to actually post the position based on the whatever structure we decide is appropriate. Okay, I, and I, if Chuck thinks that that's reasonable, obviously I mean, that, we'd have to ask Cindy. That's as just well. jumping meetings. I, I don't know. This all works. helps me very much in the perspective of when I speak with another town, how much time we want in the IMA. This is important stuff for me, obviously, because if I tell them we need a interim building commissioner or an IMA with you all for three months, that's going to be a little bit different than six months. So I need to be as, as, as knowledgeable about what our time frame is going to look like so I can offer that information so that we don't find ourselves three months in with an IMA and the town say, you know, you really only asked for three months. We can't continue to do this. It's putting a strain on our department. If we had known it was going to be six months, we might have said no. You know, and now you've got, you know, more more people than you want involved in this process that I, as far as I think so but I put that forward without any thought to the schedule of the people involved so no I, I think it, it's reasonable in fact uh, that that was even if three of us can't get together um, maybe you and I can meet and we can yeah. do some stuff around then you and Cindy can meet if the three of us can get together great but um, uh, this week is better than the next couple okay. weeks for me. So if yeah. you and I can get together, yeah, absolutely. And we'll send the other be great. Absolutely. But that essentially puts us on track to get a posting established by early to mid-October. Yeah. Which then puts us in a position, I mean, at that point it becomes a January 1st start date, plus or minus. And if we're not talking about major structural changes, it could actually happen quicker than that. But it depends right. on what the recommendation is. It's possible is. the recommendation says, you know what, everything looks good. That's yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, you and I will follow up as far as us yes. getting together this week. Yes. I think the last one, and I, I'm putting out a step. This step can be modified to the extent that the board wishes to modify it. The step that I'm proposing is that the town administrator work with one or two members of the board of selectmen on initial meetings with the school superintendent and school committee members to discuss the position of the facilities director and report back to the board at a September meeting, and that I and you can read this in your motion should you desire, it's expressly understood that other parties, such as the Permanent Municipal Building Committee, would be sought for input at a, at a later date. You know, I guess the way I see it is the group meets, comes back to a September meeting, and then we discuss what was collected in the discussion, and then we decide upon next steps, kind of one step at a time. It's similar to kind of how we're looking at some of the other positions tonight as well. It's fine with me. Well, it's... it's then this very position is somewhat dependent on what happens with I was going to say the same thing. I think I think the last position we were talking about, if we are reorganizing and trying to look at a, you know. They're going to have some global, sort of relationship. It's going to be, yeah, exactly. That, that some of this might be encompassing, <coughs> you know, so I think that um, okay. what we're looking to do here is just kind of get all the um, stakeholders, I guess, or interested parties kind of at the table to discuss how this would play out, right. especially with regards to the schools, because I think we've got the buy-in for, the, the right. town-owned buildings, but when it comes to the schools, we wanted to we want to make sure that they're you know they're on board and they're, they're there are you know, unique features to each one, but I think they kind of paired in terms of the analysis process we're anticipating. And that you know you you all were part of deciding to post the or, or advocate for the funding for these this position. I've only seen a portion of this subject in my time here, and I've heard from a number of department heads on this subject. The only question I have is whether or not we can do this in tandem or in conjunction at the same time so that we're not putting one process as having to be completed before the other process begins so that we can try to save on some time. You know, I think getting together a meeting and, and kind of Flushing some of this out, flushing some of this out, is, um, can be productive. I think the, it, it makes some sense to involve either Cindy, Cindy, and or myself, because I think there is some connectivity to the other position. If in fact we are looking at kind of restructuring that, and this doesn't happen in a vacuum either. We had this position once before, and it, you know, there's a lot of it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So didn't work out the way intended. And so I think dealing with it in a silo is not the right approach on it. It'd probably be more effective if it's tied more uh, tethered to the 
other department. But, but when do we tell them we put it in their budget? Hmm? When do we tell them we put the salary in their budget? In the school? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's part of this discussion, the right? The reason this hasn't happened for several years, you know. Yeah. So are we saying that we're not prepared to move forward on this and we'd like to wait until the other piece is more defined or are we saying we should move forward with this and um, kind of take it slowly, somewhat slowly? I don't know that we need a motion to do this. I think that if we if we have some, some conversations with the superintendent and then the business manager and maybe the school committee um, just to talk about the impact, at least to them, and certainly we can bring in the, the PMBC. Um, but I do think it's, I mean, at this point, it's what's the rush? I don't think you need any motions, but I do think that it would be beneficial from the perspective of clarity on who's working on what so that we're not in a situation where people feel that they, when they see the school superintendent, they say, hey, by the way, I want to talk to you about this position. Well, it would be good to define who is working on this at a minimum. You don't need to vote it, but let's at least clearly define. I mean, it, it, it has to be Chuck and or Cindy, right? Yeah, in my mind, I, I thought we kind of discussed this before, this was going to be part of that conversation. And whatever re recommendations you come back on, uh, this is what we think about this one, this is what we think about the other. Yeah, or throw both of those out. We have a different structure that, uh, you know, uh, accomplishes both of those ends and other things. So I think by needs, until until you tell us otherwise or recommend so otherwise, they're uncle. together. Yeah, until you cry <laughs> uncle. The two of them are together. And, and um, I don't know that we could do anything different with it in terms of the posting period. And, and, if you and I get together this week, yeah, we can we'll have that, we can that, have that well. conversation. Yeah, yeah, Cindy's point point back tonight, too, yeah. so she's going to be And around. that's just got to be plugged into the same discussion of the right. structural yeah. considerations. Okay. All right. Okay. That's it. Number nine, goal, number nine goal submission, next steps. So I guess, if I may, just jump in to, to try to begin the conversation. I guess I was thinking we may need another meeting. I don't know if the board felt that way as well. Um, we had a great opportunity, I thought, to discuss everyone's goals and consider and listen and even in some cases interrupt a lot of people's goals <laughs> to understand their, their request or, or their point. But we really didn't have the opportunity before the evening ended to decide on goals, prioritize those goals. So, you know, I would recommend another meeting and I, like I have before, I'd recommend a neutral location really doesn't matter what it is. Probably don't recommend 37 Shattuck Street. Could be fire department. Could be doesn't matter. And but water. a different site. Right. I think it's beneficial to just the environment of right. thinking out of the out of the box. I would I would just suggest one thing to save time is that we take all the subjects because we've all talked about certain subjects and not getting into the whole thing of going through everyone's thing again. Have the subjects there and. Maybe people want to be assigned to certain parts of that. Because I remember back before you were here, Paula yeah. Vella once, one of us, Lechman, we went through something similar, and people had 53 different things to do, and he reminded us that those weren't goals, those were tasks that fall under... Right, the uh, objectives. And, yeah. Yeah. I agree, because the, the challenge in organizing is two people put the same topic down and have two very different takes mm -hmm. on it, so you have to be mindful of that. And I, I'd also offer this. I think Cindy said she took some notes. I know you did yeah. as well, so maybe well, we could... And she produced a bit of a matrix, actually, did what she? she did, and she sent it mm -hmm. to me. I just, it, now that I've mentioned it in an open meeting, it's going to be easier for me to send it, but... Uh, she produced a matrix that said, you know, the subject, and if there are multiple board members or town right. administrator who felt inclined on that specific subject. So uh, I could take a look at it. I think that's something I could easily distribute. But So I, I think what we need to do before that meeting is each of us needs to look at and prioritize. You know, I may have eight goals, but they're not all the same. Right. Right? In terms of priority structure. That would be so ideal. So we each need to look at ours, prioritize our goals, decide what we really want to drive at what's maybe e even within those goals less important take a look at Cindy's matrix meet again and pre be prepared to answer this specific question what are the three things that you know each of us really wants to dedicate time energy and resources towards and I'm looking at my own list with the yeah. similar thought of what you're just saying but I pair them down even in a different manner there's the items that we're already working on 
that we need to keep going forward on, and then there's like new initiatives, and that that you know in my mind I'm going to be focused on the things I would like to see us get into that we haven't previously because without that spur isn't going to happen. Other things, you know, to chug it along. Mm -hmm. But you know, whatever gets us to pare it down, organize it better, sure, that's what we need to do. Why don't we set up, send out that matrix, we can all take a look at it, and then try Suggest to set some dates, whatever. Set some dates. We don't Sorry. want to try to set two or three dates tonight, and then I can run them past Cindy? A lot of, a lot of flux in the September schedule, so I wouldn't. You can, we can float them, but I'm not sure how quick I can respond to them. Okay, myself. so maybe if, if it's easier for one member, then we'll just float idea dates out. Are we, we're obviously talking about an independent meeting night, independent of any other meeting at this point we have. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, is there, uh, I don't really have a strong if preference, but I wouldn't want to rule out the possibility we could do a Saturday morning or something, too. Fine. Oh, actually, I kind of like that idea. I think that also... Um, you may not like that idea. Fine with me. It, it com compels us to shorten it a little bit, too, you know? Uh, right. Uh, Saturdays are tough for me. It's yeah. football season. Uh, it's true. Oh, already? Jeez. How'd that happen? Or, okay, well, or, or, a, morning, or a morning. You know, it doesn't have to be a Saturday morning, but it could be a morning, too. Courtney mm -hmm. Viema. Okay. Throw out some different options. I mean, if we if we met at seven and we're out by ten, I can still hit the road. That's conceivable. They playing any games around here? Does that generally work for you, Chase? Like like a seven to ten type Nichols of thing. And Curry. Yeah. On on a weekday. If I throw out some options, maybe. I prefer six to nine, but yeah. Six to nine? Oh. We can do six to nine. Six a.m. to nine for you. Yourself. Coffee for you. Don't worry, I got you. Uh, I'm, I'm awake. I'm, there's not the, my cat gets me up at five to feed him. So I'm, if. if it yeah, I mean, it, it it's highly dependent on the day. Okay. Um, but it, I'll, I'll make it work. Okay. Uh, what the heck am I doing? Doodle polls weren't really, were liked or were not liked? Which ones? Doodle polls. I, I prefer Big thumbs the group, up for me. group texts were uh, better for me. I mean, we get to hear each other that way. Okay. That's one personal preference. So. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Do we all for that file? Yes, that's all for that one. All right. Um, Brings us up to 10 in the yard. Uh, yes, so. Administrative. Depending upon how quickly or slowly the board wants me to move through these things, I can probably move pretty quickly through A, B, and C. Um, D and E may be a little bit more discussion. For A, at this point, you know, we're really ready to call the special town meeting. It would be great to hear any articles that you don't see on the timeline that has been drafted um, just after the cover sheet. And otherwise, I think really we're, to in large part, ready to, to call a special town meeting for October 28th and um, open the warrant and also assuming a, the board is agreeable to the proposed closure date of Monday, September 16th, disregard the 2018 reference behind me, 2019 at noon, then we have some proposed clo warrant closure dates as well. I will um, note, go ahead. I, I, the only thing I was going to say is I will note that this timeline proposes an additional meeting on October 1st, which is a Tuesday, which would be necessary to make this actually happen. Um, we couldn't easily do Monday, or I, I guess I wouldn't recommend doing Monday because that's Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, I was thinking of the Brown property, um, and if some action needed to be taken there with respect to the Brown property, but I just don't see us having the pieces in place to move forward by mid-September uh, before the warrant closes. And uh, on the sewer, it's hard to say at this point how many different articles we might need depending mm -hmm. on, um, like For Tom now. enabling the, the transfer to water department management, that kind of stuff. I don't, you know, we're going to have to think of how many, yeah. how many different 
boxes we have to check to make that all work. Right. I think for right now, <coughs> Nina, if you can put the brown property on right now as a placeholder, we may need something there. We may. Happy to do it. Too, too early to put the other property we were discussing earlier tonight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh. you'd have to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be too early. But I could give that some more thought between now and the next meeting. Really run through my. You don't have to be, you just put potential purchase. Purchase. Okay. Right? Not, not identify it. lose track of it. That can't be harmful. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you for those. If have, there are um, any others, and, and you think of them after this meeting, just please email me. I, I see our number five here, the Water Department's PFOS borrowing article. Does that mean that uh, Light and Water has already given you what they expect to need? Or they was have that not. They have okay. just said, hey, we may need something, so just okay. FYI. Uh, I, I think there's a possibility with respect to the sewer, uh, some land acquisition um, component depending on where where the the plant may be located again I, I doubt that actually comes forward this fall but uh, it, if you're trying to keep track of potentialities yep. okay you all set with a I would just recommend a motion to open the warrant and Close the Move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 39, Section 10 to call a special town meeting for Monday, October 28, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Charles Forbes K Gymnasium, Littleton Middle School, 55 Russell Street, with the warrant, therefore, to open forthwith and close on Monday, September 16, 2018 at noon. 2019? Yeah, please. Second. Your motion made and second all those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry for that, Chase. Um, the next item is kind of just the rest of the meeting schedule for the year. Please note that these only list the regular meeting items, not necessarily the October 1st that we indirectly agreed to just tonight, nor the September 5th potential joint meeting with the Board of Library Trustees. Any special meetings wouldn't be on this list. <coughs> Excuse me. So any motion for this? Mm -hmm. uh, the only caveat is I don't know if the board would like to meet on the 21st. Um, it was brought to my attention that there's a Patriots game that night, just FYI. I also will not be present myself because I will be at a conference. October 21st? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a safe assumption. No. <laughs> so we do 7th and 14th. Kudos for noticing that. But that's good. We used to do that routinely. And a very good advisor suggested that I take a look at that. Right. Isn't that where we put the really hard things? Mm -hmm. On the meeting that overlaps with the Patriots game? Uh, so, not the 21st? Correct. So, October 14th, October 22nd? 14th is probably a holiday, right? Wouldn't that be Columbus, Columbus Day? Okay. Or so, as we have it here in Digital. So, I have a, um, a table in your, uh, a pretty raw looking table in your packet that goes through the date and it lists every Monday through December 30th, and then it lists whether there's a proposed meeting and any other comments. There's a number of different holidays that we've avoided. If you don't go with an October 21st meeting, if there's any business, I suppose you could do it on October 28th before mm -hmm. the special town meeting. I, I'm going to guess that we're not going to be able to traverse the three weeks between October 27th and 28th without a meeting, but... Um, I think you might. Oh, well, I'm, I'm willing to leave it open for right now, and we'll figure it out. But this is the time of year we start to engage in joint meetings with our friends on the finance committee and the school committee. So perhaps if we can't meet or are looking not to meet on October 21st, you guys meeting on the 22nd? Maybe we could see what uh, joint topics we have, bundle them toward that meeting. And we can't meet on the 21st at the pub, right? Could. Not recommended. Okay, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to schedule the following Board of Selectmen's regular meetings for the dates indicated at 6.30 p.m. in room 103 Shattuck Street Building, 
October 7th, 2019, November 4th and 18th, 2019, December 2nd and 16th, 2019. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next item is the LELWD 2019 MassWorks grant application. I believe that the board um, members knew that LELWD was uh, planning to file an application for the Russell Street water main replacements. Based on time and other factors that were beyond my control, I um, felt that I was in a difficult position and felt I had to sign the MassWorks grant application and I'm asking that the board retroactively authorize me to bless that application process. Ready for a motion? Yep. Um, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to retroactively authorize the Town Administrator to sign the LELWD 2019 MassWorks grant application for water main replacement on Russell Street. Second. Move has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next item is just something that came to my attention, and, and I don't know if there's been past practice on it or otherwise, but uh, there was a uh, request on the part of the Permanent Building Municipal Committee, Municipal Building Committee, to um, move forward with the Shaker Lane wheelchair lift. And, you know, it occurred to me that there may not be an authorization for the town administrator to waive permit fees on municipally initiated projects on municipal buildings. So I thought I would propose this for the board's consideration to potentially authorize me to waive, again, only permit fees on town-owned buildings slash properties that we initiate the project. And it's just the permit fee. Correct. It's just we're, we're not shifting $100 from one bank account Correct. to the other. I mean, what we are doing here is we are affecting, theoretically, the revolving account for the rec representative inspectional services departments. I do not expect that that is a material amount of money by any means, and it's certainly not what sustains the payment of the inspector's fees throughout the year. That is all the other work that comes in. All we're doing is we're not paying from one pocket to the other pocket and back. That's really what we're saving ourselves. So does this mean then that the policy is to waive all or does all fees or does this That's mean what I would do ultimately and we can change that in this manner. If I guess I would want that articulated because the way I read this is that it's at your discretion right. and I don't think that helps I would, you. I would end up waiving all of them. <coughs> I would want to be consistent with my right. right. So but if we wanted to change the motion to be that the Board of Selectmen waives any town of Littleton permit fees on projects initiated by the town of Littleton on town owned buildings slash properties to be you know, you know, not to, well, leave it there, then that would be sufficient. Tom, is there any exposure to us if we don't, if, if we have a, a contract that's doing work on one of our buildings, do we want them to be pulling permits to? You're still, <coughs> you're still paying for it. So it's one yeah. pocket to the other. Yeah, so there's no, there's no exposure, liability, or anything. Okay. Any, any particular incident driving this? So I'm just curious where it's coming from. Or yeah, why. PMBC had a request for Shaker Lane uh, wheelchair lift on oh, July 30th. Right, right. You mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah. George. Mr. Chairman, George Sanders, 672 Bay Road. All work is initiated by the town. I find no reason for us to waive any fees if we got contractors that we're paying to do the work. They should pull a permit and pay the fee. There shouldn't be no exemption. One exemption is that if you got the facility maintenance of the town going and doing work, then you wouldn't require him to have a permit. But if you got commercial coming in, doing work for the town, like that chair left, and shake a lane, we shouldn't be waiving no fee. We are paying them to do the job. And they need to pull the permit so we are aware of what they're doing. George, they'll, they're, they still have to pull the permit. And you're right that we're paying them. So we pay them, and then they then pay the town to pull the fee. All we're talking, to pull the permit, all we're talking about is the dollars associated with the permit, not the permit itself. Everybody still has to pull permits. 
the town by law has to pull permits to do work on town owned property. It's just whether we're moving money around and it's all funny money because it's coming out of one town bank account and going into the other. Well, pull it out and put it in the other so we have accountability. We haven't had that in the past here. Then we haven't had a problem with it. I don't foresee it having a problem with it. <coughs> Let's do it the right way. My opinion. And however the board wants to move forward on this, if we were to do that, you know, it would be one, the one thing that I like to try to see occur, especially over a period of time here, because I'm not as versed in the contracts with Littleton at this stage, is that the contracts would say that the building permit fee would be waived before they go out to bid, so that the contractor isn't incorporating that cost into there. But again, however the board wants to handle this, this is a standard, somewhat standard practice that exists in other communities, so just thought I'd raise it. Doesn't truly matter to me what direction it goes in. I think it's fine. It makes sense. It's one less thing to worry. Yeah, it's logical. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to authorize the town administrator to waive town of Littleton permit fees on projects by the town of Littleton on town owned buildings properties. Second. Motion been made in the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we have a position on the Minuteman Advisory Group on Interlocal Coordination, also known as MAGIC, which is a subgroup of the MAPC, subregion, I guess I should call it. And uh, I understand, I believe, that Keith Bergman was the prior representative. Uh, the, the town gets two representatives, one appointed by the Board of Selectmen, one appointed by the Planning Board. Marin Tuhill is the Planning Board representative. I'm open to being the representative. I'm open to if the board wishes to be the representative. I'm also open if the board has an alternative in mind. Do you want to be? It wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be something bad to delegate to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, there is some value in staying up on regional projects on that one. I mean, I know the MAP, you do you know, a good job of staying uh, in touch with the MAPC stuff, but uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, MMA stuff, but the, uh, the uh, somebody should be going to our magic meetings. Happy to do it if the board. <laughs> Assistant town administrator. Wow. Well. Happy to do it if the board. No, no, no you, can, you can delegate. I, mean, I, I thought you were prefacing that you wanted to do it. Now, if you, you know, I'm, I'm it's not that it. I don't. I'm just, and I don't. I, it's not that I don't want to do it. I just want to be mindful of the uh, resource draw. I mean, can we do it this way? Can we appoint you? Or designee? Or your designee? Yes. Yeah. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint uh, Nina Nazarian or her designee to the Minuteman Advisory Group on Interlocal Coordination through June 30th, 2020. Second. For discussion, the designee may or may not be able to vote, but I could certainly designate someone to attend on in my place. Information flow is as much of a you know, value right. to it as anything. Okay, motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes. No, the rest of it is that just additional information for us to read through. I'm sorry. Or it's just additional information. Oh yeah, yeah, that was on probably each and every one of right. them. Right, support yeah. for each of those okay. motions we just made. All right, then we're down to minutes. It was July 29th and August 6th. The only, the only thing that I made note of and don't think was necessary to include was at 645 the public input section um, saying it was suggested that there was discrimination against her and Christine Nordhaus uh, as a woman and her ability to run a marijuana facility from the head. Well and in fairness I don't think every other piece no. was captured here. Correct. Sorry I didn't catch that. So we're either going to put all the comments exactly. that came in under public input or none of them. That's kind of my point. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy particularly with public comments to capture the topics. I, I do very much like to be able to go <coughs> and see, oh, we, we received public comments on the orchard. Great. Sure. I, I want to yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, that's very we, helpful. Why don't we take this set of minutes and revise it to capture each subject? So that, and we could make that a consistent practice, if that's the way that the board would like to see these, 
this because again we don't this isn't a dictation of what occurred at the meeting it's a right. summary of what occurred at the meeting so we could take Motion we could hold votes. the July 29th minutes and I don't know to what extent the board feels the same way I suppose the August 6th they're not the same but uh, mm -hmm. there was no public comment that night but we could hold the July 29th and we could revise those and, and come back at a future date I do like the format, you know, with the yep. broken out with timing and, and you know, itemized. Mm -hmm. It's have we have we settled on like an individual that's doing our minutes now? Is it Diane or Sue it's Ryan? between Sue, Sue and Diane to be honest. And then case by case, Chase and I, I guess. <laughs> I really appreciate that she gave me any credit. That was executive session minutes, for example. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the meeting minutes of August 6, 2019. Is there a second? Oh, yes, second. Okay. Motion to be made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. No. No. Uh, no. <laughs> that. Sure. So before you adjourn, I have a We have another sorry, agenda I'm sorry, item, too. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do have one more agenda item. Okay. Well, the minutes are just not in the packet. I can, I'll start. I had a conversation with Tom early today on the specific subject of the MOU piece of it. Unfortunately, everybody's in violent agreement on what we're doing, and then the document got kind of built big and unwieldy and doesn't really have a whole lot of legal clout anyways. It's more of a feel-good moment. So the... Um, Nina and I discussed, uh, and I think uh, Nick is aware too, that we'll try to go for the ninth when we have a nice big viewing audience after the uh, August and have the, the Light and Water Commission is in here and, and that gives us a little time to recirculate uh, another draft that Tom could make of the MOU um, on that piece of it. But Chase, maybe you want to, without naming names, give the other update we got this afternoon as far as... I've actually been fully disconnected from my email. Oh, all right, the text. Okay. Oh, that one. Yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Um, we do have, and the, and the Light and Water folks are actually kind of taking the lead on this, but maybe they'll be willing to pay for it too. Uh, a very, <laughs> very good candidate property, or good news on one of our high target candidate properties in that a competitive bidder had uh, dropped out of the running. Um, but they still have, they want to kick the tires on a couple of the others too. And we're hoping... It's a good geographic location. It's good technically. Yeah. It, it's a hair more expensive. It, I would expect it would be a hair more expensive than doing it at the DPW facility, but it would have, uh, it would not have some of the downsides. Right. So. And um, all the things we've been considering over the summer have been not the highway. I, I think it's fair to say that. So for those, well, folks I don't think that's commitment. entirely true. We we have been thinking about um, what could go in at the highway that is consistent with the expressed concerns of the abutters. That is, you know, uh, if we did a smart sewer light, would that work at the at the DPW facility? True, based there on was the, a discussion on that, but but the majority of the time has been spent finding an alternative location, and. We're alive on that. Hopefully there'll be something this week. Nick's on vacation this week, but Jim Carr is, is following up on, uh, on a couple of the properties, particularly. Um, Nick did talk to a realtor for the uh, property that, that Chase was just referencing last Thursday, so we don't want to drop the ball on that one. Okay. All right. Go as quickly. You want to sign the 682 Great Road. Just Jim, on the Commission on Disability, we have been having a problem. We can't do training, disability training. When Paul was the chair, he told me to tell Bunny to get us the money. I know the budget already been approved, but all we asked for was $1,200. Right now, we can't do any training whatsoever because we don't have any money in the budget. And the last time I went to training, I refuse to do any more because it takes the town almost a year to pay me for the travel. I mean, that's nonsense. We, we, we have programs and stuff that the state is doing. We can't send nobody because there's no money for us to pay for the travel. So can this board give us some money out of the reserve, $1,200? 
I don't have an answer to that right now. The board doesn't have the board. The board of selectmen doesn't have access to the reserve fund transfer. That's solely through the finance committee. I, the the disability commission could go and seek a reserve fund transfer from the advisory committee. I'm sorry, finance committee. Um, and then perhaps there could also be other options that we could discuss at a future meeting. So there's a route, George. There's a route. I do think, as an aside, not not in any way to discount Mr. Sanders's point. From what I'm seeing, I do think that professional development budgets should be reviewed across the organization. Well, we got the state coming out on the 16th of October to do. Uh, for parents emergency disability training, uh, which is going to be taken at the, uh, which will be done at the fire station here. But uh, they are paying for that to come out and do this for the citizens of Lilburn. I just know that we've asked everybody, we asked Steve, we asked Bunny, I asked Paul when he was the chair, and everybody said, oh yeah, but tell them to do this, do that, and then we still get nothing. I would say, since I was cited there, uh, George, in the, in the short term, the reserve fund transfer might be the best opportunity. Uh, Gary's wincing. Uh, but otherwise, the budget process is beginning soon, too. Let's, let's, let's not let it happen again and get it, you know, get it funded. That was the last time. Well, well, did you ask for it and not get it? Yes, we did. We most certainly did. And I went to Steve, and, and, and he told now we're doing on the next budget. Came up and asked again for the same thing again. Well, I just think that everybody got a budget except us. What we need to see, George, is some explicit request. So, you know, and, and what exactly it is you want that money for. We're unlikely to cut you a check without specifically what, what you're looking for. Uh, so just, just put it down in writing and we'll figure it out. We put it, we put it, we put it in writing. But we'll do it again. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made. Second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chuck, September 5th.